Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto neglected by families and Pakuto council bashing. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by R-U-S-T-Y-C-A-G-E-500 and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1. The Beginning. October 10 Day of Kikbi's Attack October 10, it was seemingly normal day in Kanoha, except the gigantic nine-tailed fox currently attacking it. A group of people are speeding through the village toward the spot where the Yandame Hokage, Minato Namikaze, is currently fighting with the giant fox. The first person is a man around 180 centimeters in height with bright sky blue eyes open wide, he appears to be an early to mid 20 year old person, he is unusually thin and tall with very sharp features, giving him a skeletal appearance, and bears unusual silver hair. He wears black kimono shirt, dark grey anbu styled pants, black strapped up shinobi sandals and white sash tied around his waist, to which a wakizashi with light blue hilt is tied. His name is Jinichimaru. The second person is a man of around 183 centimeters in height, he's a tall, lean built man with light skin and grey eyes. His hair is messy and light blonde, almost pale, with strands framing the sides of the face and hanging between his eyes. He wears a dark coat, which sports a white diamond pattern along its bottom half, with a dark green shirt and pants underneath, along with black shinobi sandals. In his hand is a beige-colored shikamazu with a curved handle and silver base. His name is Yurahara Kisuke. The third person is also a man of around 180 centimeters in height, he is a tall, muscular man with spiky black hair with noticeable sideburns and brown eyes. He wears black kimono shirt, black anbu pants, black shinobi sandals and a red sash tied around his waist, to which a tachi with a red handle and hexagonal tsuba is attached. His name is Isan Shiba. The fourth and last person was a fair-skinned man of around 176 cm in height with blue eyes and white hair, with bangs combed to one side. He wears grey long-sleeved shirt and grey pants, along with black shinobi sandals, in his left hand is a short white bow without bowstring. His name is Rikan Ishida. After few more minutes of jumping from roof to roof and then from tree to tree, the four of them arrived at the peculiar scene of a blonde-haired man fighting another man with a mask covering his face. Am, Kmai. Isin shouted and jumped forward, he unsheathed his sword which immediately began to release a flame-like energy. It's Suga Tenshin. He shouted and swung his blade down on the masked man whose eyes went wide under his mask, a crescent moon of bright blue energy shot out from the tip of his blade and slammed into the man who released a pain-filled scream, the wave of energy traveled along with the masked man, before dissipating hundred meters away, with the masked man falling onto the ground in a heap. This unsheathed his sword and run up to the blonde-haired man kneeling on the ground, panting heavily. God damn it Kmai, what the hell were you thinking? Isin shouted and slapped the man on top of his head, causing him to fall down face first in the ground. The blonde man quickly regained his composure and stood up on wobbly legs. I'm sorry Isin senpai, I didn't had a choice. Minato Namika said weakly and began to walk away only to wobble and trip on his own legs, before he could fall down Isin kneeled before him, so that he fall on Isin's back. Where the hell do you think you're going Kamai? Isin asked sternly, his eyes narrowing. Minato only shook his head and looked forward. Isin senpai what I'm about to do will be something you will beat me up for in afterlife, but I must do this kickby is rampaging, I have no choice, but use shiki Jin to seal it, that's why please take care of Kashina and Naruto for me. With that said Minato disappeared in a flash, leaving a stunned group behind. My you moron just what are you planning? Isin asked himself before quickly standing up and turning toward the three other men. Let's go, that brat wants to use shiki Jin. That was everything it took for all four of them to speak toward the last place they saw Kikbi. After several more minutes they arrived at the horrible scene, Minato, and a red-haired woman, Kishina Yuzumaki, was speared through by an enormous claw, belonging to the even larger nine-tailed fox, that was slowly disintegrating into an orange mist-like energy, and flowing into a seal placed on the stomach of a tiny blonde-haired child, that was currently laying on top of an altar. All four men quickly jumped in front of Minato. Brad what the hell were you thinking, you two Kishina Isin yelled at them, surprising the remaining man as Isin wasn't one to lose composure so easily, the tears streaming down his face weren't helping at all. Minato looked up at the man who trained him and smiled. I'm sorry senpai cough I wasn't planning on cough that Urahara senpai cough Minato called out the other blonde haired man stepped out in front of him with a grim expression. Brad why the hell you did that? Obviously there was another way. Urahara said to which Minato chuckled and turned coughing up more blood. Urahara shook his head sadly. Urahara senpai cough please take care of Naruto cough I want him to be seen as a hero for holding back Kikbi cough can you do that? He asked with a weak smile, the light slowly fading from his eyes. Urahara and the rest nodded firmly, which brought a smile to Minato's face. Senpai please tell Neru-kun that his parents loved him okay. Kishina said weakly, tears leaking down her face. 
Isan tried to wipe his eyes without much success, while Yurihara tried hard to hold back his tears. All right sniff we will take care of him Bakakmai. Yurihara said slowly, both Minato and Kishina smiled before the light left their eyes, and Kikbi disappeared completely. The two fold down lifelessly, causing the four men to bow their heads in sadness, the only sound breaking the silence was the crying of the newborn Naruto. After a few more minutes Urahara stepped forward and in a puff of smoke, two white coffins with glass lids, appeared on the ground near Minato and Kishina, he opened the coffins and put them inside before closing the lids, almost immediately a green glow surrounded both bodies. Akakmai sniff why did you have to play a hero dammit? Urahara choked out, tears streaming down his face, even Rikken and Jin began to cry. After several seconds a group of people jumped down near them followed by gasps. Minato you idiot. A voice of hers in Suratobi broke the silence, Isan, Kisuke, Jin and Rikken turned toward the third Hokage with grim expressions. Sandame sama we must talk. July 15 15 years after Kikbi's attack day before graduation morning, through the already busy streets of Kanoha, a 15 years old boy around 173 centimeters in height was walking. He has shoulder length blonde spiky hair with bangs pulled to the left side of his face and hold in place by a small white hexagonal headpiece with red kanji for sky on it. He also have blue eyes with slitted pupils, along with three thick whisker marks on each cheek, his face put into a seemingly permanent scowl. He wears black form-fitting shirt, black pants tucked into black shinobi sandals, a kunai pouch tied to his right thigh, three scrolls holsters tied to his left thigh, and long black heori over it all. The heori has a completely white hexagon on the back with red kanji for fox inside the hexagon. The heori from the thighs down split into nine coattails resembling fluffy fox tails. The heori is also held together in the front by an orange X-shaped cloth near his neck. Tied to his back beneath the heori by a red cloth is an dachi with an orange hilt. The tsuba has a teardrop shape, with the base of the drop arsing over the top of the blade and the point of the drop pointing below the cutting edge. A row of several tiny teardrop-shaped holes decorates the bottom of the curve, and a small ring, approximately two in diameter, dangles off the tip of the teardrop. Most of the villagers and shinobi send glares his way, but he simply returned the glares, immediately causing them to look down in fear. DSK, weaklings few years ago I would probably let them stare at me like that, but not anymore Naruto thought and focused on his destination, Ninja Academy. He decided to turn off his surrounding and just walk forward. Narukun, so scary. A feminine, mocking and cheerful voice, sounded from inside Naruto's head, causing him to groan. Oh, great Kikchan, can you tell me why you didn't talk to me yesterday? Naruto thought to which Kikbi pouted. I was horny and you didn't came here for a few days now, I'm getting lonely. She whined which brought a small grin to Naruto's face, people stared at him in fear, especially when his fox-like eyes landed on someone accidentally. Tell you what, I was also horny, but I accepted the invitation from that lovely housewife from the neighboring building, her husband isn't satisfying her, so I just helped to a mite to ignore such hot piece of ass as her he thought, a menacing growl sounded from inside his mind. That whore, when I get out of here I will find her, and I will kill her. Naruto sighed and shook his head. Hikchan please don't do that, besides, it will be another few months before Urahara sensei will finish your body, you should blame that old goat Saratobi for that, if not for that trigger seal he placed on my body, I would channel more of your chakra for Urahara sensei to analyze without anyone knowing, DSK, you're no fun, but you're a good mate at least, and damn skillful at that. At that Naruto couldn't help but chuckle, he glanced up and smirked upon seeing the academy gate before him. Look at that, we're already here. Naruto said aloud, people backed away from him, and few ninja tensed, Naruto felt that and turned his head to glare at them. What are you staring at, do you all want to die? Naruto asked with a little growl for emphasis, almost immediately everyone returned to what they were doing before. Oh my god they're all a bunch of pussies, fearing a 15 year old boy. Kikbi said and started laughing, Naruto also chuckled and began to walk forward, he absentmindedly caught a kunai that was sailing toward his head and stored it into his kunai pouch. Thanks for that, I will need it. He said loud enough for the person that threw the kunai to hear, the kunoichi with purple hair styled into short, spiky, fan ponytail grinned and disappeared into shadows of the alley. Naruto sighed as he opened the door to the classroom, all eyes immediately landed on him causing him to sigh once more. He walked up the stairs and stopped beside the wide-eyed girl with dark blue hair kept in a short heim cut, the girl blushed and looked up at him, Naruto smiled and petted her head. Good morning Hinata. Naruto said calmly causing the girl to blush even harder before she smiled sweetly. And Naruto kun good morning. She said back shyly and bowed her head, Naruto stopped petting her and sat in a chair on her right, he tilted his head back and performed a mock salute. At the table behind him two boys are sitting, one of them sitting right behind Naruto is a boy with brown eyes and black hair pulled into a spiky ponytail, his name is Shikamaru. Sitting behind Hinata is a boy with spiky brown hair that sticks upward, his name is Shinjai. Yo, Shika, CHM, what's up? 
Shikamaru sighed at that. Troublesome as always and what about you, how many people you scared this morning? Naruto smirked at the question. Above 20 people for sure, I still can't believe that they fear an academy student. He said with his smirk stretching even wider. Not any academy student, a damn hot academy student and that's coming from me, the sexiest being you ever saw. Kikbi said, Naruto looked forward and grinned. Oh you sexy flatter, I could go there and fuck the red out of your eyes right now his thought caused Kikbi to let out an excited squeal, Naruto looked left and saw Ichiha Sasuke, the greatest pain in the ass, glaring at him. What are you doing here dog, you should be removed from academy. Sasuke said angrily, Naruto smirked at him. You know, you could be more intimidating if you were more intimidating. Naruto said calmly and turned toward him, Sasuke seed that this. Are you mocking me, and Ichiha. Sasuke nearly screamed, he stood up and glared at Naruto who quickly looked shocked and began to wave his hands in front of him in a fake fear, by now everyone gathered around them with fangirls shouting about how amazing Sasuke was. Oh no, 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 no Sasuke smirked down at Naruto who smirked back and dropped his hands to the side, a smug look replaced his faked shock. The FF, yeah. Naruto said that and looked right into Sasuke's eyes, he saw the hatred he waited for. Finally, that village cocksucker was annoying the shit out of me, I must congratulate Sandame, it was a great idea to create another council, especially with civilians on it, Naruto thought sarcastically causing Kikbi to began laughing, Naruto watched as Sasuke lunged at him and tried to punch him, a keyword tried for Naruto, everything moved in slow motion, almost like a slug traveling across the road, Naruto sighed inwardly and caught a fist in his right hand like it was nothing, his bored expression unnerved Sasuke who looked shocked at his own fist. Lame you really are a council's cocksucker Sasuke-chan. Naruto said mockingly, at that Sasuke's shock was quickly replaced by anger, he cocked his right fist back and attempted to hit Naruto again, but Naruto just tightened his grip on Sasuke's left fist and threw him at the classroom entrance, just as two girls tried to enter, one with long blonde hair and another with pink hair. To the shock of everyone present Sasuke sailed at the door and slammed into the two girls, launching all three of them outside the class and into the corridor. Nah Naruto-kun, you shouldn't fight in here. Hinata's shy voice sounded from behind Naruto, he turned his head toward her and smiled. But Hinata-chan, he was the first to attack me. Hinata blushed and began to play with her fingers. Yo you know what I mean. That only caused Naruto to grin. I know. Naruto said and looked at all the gathered. He started it, right. Everyone quickly nodded and returned to their seats, just then the blonde girl walked into the class and glared at Naruto. What the hell Naruto, you could kill me. Ino screamed at him, Naruto blinked and began to scratch the back of his head. Oh, it was you Ino-chan, sorry I guess. At that Ino only pouted and sat in the chair in front of Hinata. Naruto looked at the chair before him and blinked, sitting there was a boy with dark bushy brown hair wearing dark brown glasses. Shino-san, I didn't saw you there sorry. Everyone from the group blinked and looked at Shino. How did he get there was everyone thought, Shino himself nodded in Naruto's direction. It's alright Naruto-san. With that Shino returned to looking ahead, Sasuke supported by Sakura walked into the class, both sending glares at Naruto who ignored them, following them was a boy with a white dog laying on top of his head, the boy, Kiba Inuzuka seized upon seeing Naruto. Hey, bastard, what the hell do you think you're doing? Kiba shouted angrily, pointing his finger at Naruto, the dog on top of his head, Akamaru, whined at that. Naruto blinked and looked down. Well, sitting I guess was that so hard to figure. Naruto said teasingly which only angered Kiba more. Oh god, not again. Shikamaru said with a sigh and placed his forehead on top of the table. The rest of the group also sighed as Kiba began to walk toward Naruto from his left side. Naruto just smirked and crossed his arms over his chest. Kiba upon nearing Naruto, cocked his right fist back and sent a punch at Naruto's shoulder. Naruto's smirk became menacing as Kiba's fist slammed into something before Naruto's shoulder. He screamed in pain and quickly stepped back holding his throbbing hand. Shino saw that and raised his eyebrow. Ah bastard, what did you do? Kiba asked angrily, Naruto turned toward him, and Kiba froze in fear, Naruto's eyes turned a menacing red color. Sit down mutt, I'm an alpha that's as good answer as you can get. Naruto said coldly, Kiba flinched and walked to the last desk near the window, as far into the corner as he could. Naruto's eyes turned back to blue color, he huffed in annoyance and looked at Shikamaru with a grin. Nah, Shika guess what? Shikamaru just groaned and shook his head. I don't want to guess anything too troublesome. Shikamaru said without lifting his head from the desk. You're no fun. Naruto said with a huff, he turned to the front and sighed. Odd they sure take their time to get here. Naruto said in slight annoyance, everyone from the small group nodded. After 20 more minutes two men walked inside the classroom, one of them has white shoulder length hair and green eyes, the other one has brown hair kept in a spiky ponytail, dark eyes and a scar running across his nose. Alright, listen up everyone, tomorrow is a graduation day, but today will be the field test. Let's go to the training ground. Hiruka said to which Naruto sighed in relief. 
Finally, I was afraid we will sit here for an hour. He said and stood up, everyone walked out from the classroom and followed after Mizuki and Aruka outside the academy where the training ground was. Okay everyone, let's start with accuracy test, Naruto, you first. At that Naruto sighed. Aruka sensei, I don't think it is a good idea, I would rather go last you know to see how everyone else are doing it. Aruka hummed and thought and nodded after few seconds. Alright Naruto, then Sasuke, you're next. Sasuke smirked at Naruto who looked completely unfazed, Mizuki handed the five kunai to Sasuke and backed away, Sasuke took the stance, and when Aruka signaled he threw all five kunai in quick succession, amazing most people, the three kunai hit ten, one hit nine, while the last one hit seven, Sasuke's fangirls began to shout and jump at how amazing Sasuke is which only boosted his already enormous ego. Very good Sasuke, 46 points, next is Sakura Hurano Naruto tuned out everything in favor of speaking with Kikpi. The Kik-chan, what would you do when your Ahara sensei finished the body? Naruto asked, Kikpi hummed and thought, after several seconds a giggle escaped her mouth. Well, I have an idea, but you probably won't like it. Naruto raised his eyebrow at that. What idea? Another giggle from Kikpi caused even more confusion. Hits at least five. Naruto tilted his head to the side, everyone watched him in confusion except Shikamaru who long ago figured what Naruto hold and was fine with that. Hits. Aren't kids a young foe a blush appeared on Naruto's face when he noticed what Kikbi was implying. Yep, so what do you think would you help me with that? Kikbi asked in a seductive tone. Big Chan, I don't think it is a good idea I mean, I won't be a good father of that I'm sure Kikbi only huffed at that. Bullshit, I wouldn't be able to find a better material for a father than you, besides you're my mate and an alpha, it's your damn job to give me kids to take care of. Alright Kik, we will talk about it later if you want kids so much then I can give them to you, and I will try to be a good father, this caused Kikbi to squeal in excitement. I love you Naru-kun. Kikbi shouted to which Naruto grabbed his head and hissed in pain. Ichan please, not so loud and I love you too Naruto told her with a sigh. Naruto, it's your turn. Hiruka's voice brought him out from his thoughts, he blinked and looked at Mizuki who handed him the five kunai, when Naruto took them a scowl formed on his face. Bastard, they're much heavier than normal kunai, and the blade is dull, I just had to use a little more strength Naruto thought and get in the position, he cast one more look at the smug looking Mizuki, Naruto sighed and turned toward the target. Hiruka signaled to start and Naruto almost instantly threw first five kunai, which embedded themselves right in the middle, Miyuzuki almost choked on his own spit, when the dull kunai were embedded nearly to the hilt, Naruto narrowed his eyes at the point between the four kunai in the middle. Well, let's see how durable this thing is Naruto thought and threw the last kunai, everyone watched in amazement, as the kunai hit exactly in the middle of the target and pushed it back nearly few meters before it stopped. Naruto himself hissed and rolled his shoulder. Damn, I missed, that was supposed to went through. When he said that everyone gawked, except Sasuke who was seething. That dog did better than me and Ichiha Sasuke thought angrily, Naruto felt that and looked at his with a smirk. What, jealous? Naruto asked smugly which only angered Sasuke more, seeing that Aruka stepped between them before it escalated. Alright, calm down everyone, we have sparring matches ahead of us. He said and began to walk toward the further end of the training ground, where a ring for sparring was. Naruto couldn't help but smirk, he knew that Mizuki probably set Sasuke to fight with him in hopes of Naruto's defeat. Will Aruka react when I nearly kill Sasuke meh, whatever Naruto must to himself, everyone gathered a small distance from the ring. Alright, there will be only Tajutsu, nothing more, nothing less, Mizuki do your job. Hiruka said and stepped back, Mizuki smirked and looked at Naruto. Naruto and Sasuke, step into the ring. Naruto sighed. Knew it. He muttered and stepped into the ring with Sasuke standing across from him with arms crossed on his chest, his fangirls immediately began cheering. Na Naruto-kun. Hinata's shy voice cut through the crowd, Naruto turned toward her with raised eyebrow. Yes. Be please don't kill him, I do don't want you to get in trouble. When she said that Naruto pouted. No fun Hinata-chan alright, I will try to not hurt him too much. Hearing the confidence in Naruto's voice angered Sasuke. You're getting delusional dope, you can't beat an Achiha like me. Sasuke said angrily to which Naruto just looked at him in boredom. Really princess, go and prove it. Just then Mizuki started the match, and Sasuke immediately darted at Naruto and tried to hit his head with a high kick, but Naruto caught his right foot, Sasuke quickly spun his body despite the pain in his foot and attempted to kick Naruto once again, but he just released his right foot and punched him in the left ankle. Sasuke yelled in pain before he quickly regained his balance and gained some distance from Naruto, he knelt and touched his ankle. See, you can't prove anything, you're just pathetic. At that Sasuke growled and stood up before taking a stance. Naruto sighed and calmly walked up to Sasuke, when Sasuke swung his fist at Naruto, he just caught it and delivered a kick to Sasuke's chin, launching him into the air, Naruto jumped out and performed a front flip above Sasuke, before driving his heel into Sasuke's stomach, launching him back down and kicking up a cloud of dust. Sasuke-kun. 
A shout from few girls sounded just as Sasuke hit the ground, when the cloud cleared Sasuke was laying on the ground, holding his stomach in pain and trying to sit up but failing miserably. Winner, Naruto. Haruka said with a tiny smile on his face, Naruto nodded and stepped out from the ring. Gee get back here you bastard. Sasuke said weakly, finally managing to stood up, Naruto sighed and looked at him. Stay down, as your now Yusagi would kill you with one finger. Naruto said coldly, Sasuke's eyes widened before he scowled and tried to walk toward Naruto, but he tripped and fell down onto the ground. See, you're pathetic. Naruto said and walked up to his group of friends. Was it really necessary? Ino asked with arms crossed across her chest. It was, with his ego he could easily get himself killed, I just had to beat into him that he's not that strong. At Naruto's words the group nodded. Everyone began to fill out from the academy, many parents were waiting for their children, most adults glared at Naruto as he walked out from the academy, but he paid them no mind, her turned his head to his group and smiled. So, who wants to go and celebrate? Naruto asked, Ino and Shinjai agreed instantly, when Shikamaru tried to get away Ino grabbed his arm and pulled him back, Hinata looked around, and upon spotting a member of Branch family waiting for her, shook her head. So sorry, I had a training with my father scheduled, be by, Naruto-kun. Naruto just grinned and patted her head. That's okay, go and do your best. Hinata smiled at that and left, Shino was nowhere to be found causing Naruto to sigh. And Shino left again, well, let's go. With that the group of four left the academy ground and turned left toward their favorite restaurant. So, Naruto how Kiba couldn't hit you? Ino asked suddenly after several seconds of silence, Naruto looked at her and smiled. Ino my dear, that's a secret that I'm simply not ready to tell you. Naruto said calmly, Shikamaru who walked on his right side. The fox. At that Naruto tensed slightly and looked at Shikamaru. What? Ino asked, Shikamaru just shook his head, it wasn't his thing to tell about Kikbi. Naruto is like a fox, mischief is his element troublesome. When Shikamaru said that Naruto released a sigh of relief. Before any more could be said they arrived at the restaurant, they walked inside, and immediately everyone looked at them, they sit in a booth, while Shinjai ordered the food for them all. Ino and Shinjai sat on one side with Shinjai sitting away from the window, Naruto is sitting across Shinjai, while Shikamaru sit across from Ino. So Shika, how long did you know? Naruto asked silently so that Ino and Shinjai didn't heard, Shikamaru sighed and looked at him. About few months, it really isn't that hard your Hayori is pretty obvious. At that Naruto couldn't help but chuckle. True, so how are things in your house? Shikamaru sighed again. Troublesome as always, my mom is egging me out about finding myself a girlfriend, she also asked when you visit again. Naruto chuckled again. I don't know when I could be able to visit again, when I get on the team I won't have so much free time. Just then a waitress arrived with their food, she looked at Naruto and winked, an action that didn't went unnoticed by Ino, when the waitress turned around Naruto lightly slapped her on the rear, earning him a gasp from the waitress who looked at him and giggled before walking away. What was that? Ino asked with anger noticeable in her voice, Naruto looked at her and grinned. What, a man can flirt around, it's only natural that a females cling to a strong male, although I don't know what girls see in that Princess Asuk. At that Ino sighed. That's not the point, why you don't flirt around with me, or Hinata. Ino asked to which Shikamaru fasipumed and sighed. Be no age difference and you're not even a genin, Naruto could get in trouble for something like that. A look of realization crossed over Ino's face, Naruto turned to Shikamaru and grinned. Thanks Shika. Naruto said, Chinjai who by far was only interested in eating looked at Naruto. Naruto, I often see you with Anko, you know, that Takibetsu genin. Naruto grinned at that. Yeah, she's fun to be around, slightly sadistic, but damn, her body is flexible as hell. Ino and Shinjai nearly choked on their food, while Shikamaru sighed. Troublesome Shikamaru muttered under his breath, but Naruto heard it and smirked. What, I enjoy life as much as I can. Naruto said simply, however his smirk hadn't disappeared, he then simply began to eat along with the rest, when they were all finished after several minutes the same waitress from before walked up with a bill, Naruto reached toward his wallet, but the waitress raised her hand. Don't worry, it's on the house. She said cheerfully with a wink toward Naruto, he grinned and gestured for her to come closer, she obliged, and Naruto slipped something into her hand, the waitress looked inside, and her eyes went wide, in her hand was a rolled up bills. Then Naruto-kun, I can't take that. The waitress said and tried to give it back to Naruto who smiled and closed her hand. Don't worry, you helped me I was younger, that's the least I can do to repay you. The waitress just blushed and walked away with a small skip in her step. Well, I should be going, I have to visit Jin Naisama after all. With that said Naruto stood up and left. The group of three still looked somewhat shocked at what transpired but decided not to ask. Chapter 2. Graduation and a trip. 
July 15 15 years after Kikbi's attack. Inside the Hokage office Jin Ichimaru is by the window overlooking the village, through this 15 years he hadn't changed much, except the fact that now he has 186 centimeters in height, and his eyes are constantly narrowed, and he's always smiling. He wears black kimono shirt, dark gray anbu styled pants, black strapped up shinobi sandals and red sash tied around his waist, to which a wakizashi with light blue hilt is tied, however now he also wears long white haori with kanji for fifth hokage, along with a customary hat on top of his head, in his right hand is long, lit up pipe. He took a drag and held the smoke in for few seconds before letting it out, just then a knock on the door brought him up from his musing. Enter. Jin said in a cheerful tone, a man with spiky silver hair, dark gray eyes, and a relaxed, heavy-lidded expression entered the office. Ah, Kakashi-kun, what brought you here? Jin asked in his constantly cheerful tone, Kakashi tensed slightly at this, he know that Jin is much more powerful than him, and the feeling in the back of his mind forced him to become especially careful. Okajama, I wanted to ask if you could let Sasuke Chiha and Naruto Uzumaki on my team, both of them are exceptionally talented, so I'm sure then they will pass tomorrow. Kakashi said happily while Jin's smile dropped at his words and his eyes opened slightly wider, Kakashi felt his life flash before his eyes. Jin took a drag from his pipe and let out the smoke after few seconds. Watch your words Haddock-san, Sasuke is one thing, but I won't let Naruto into incompetent hands, especially with Kikbi, from what Naruto told me she can be quite irritable at times. At that Kakashi's eyes went wide. Aichi contacted Kikbi. When? He asked as his fists tightened, Jin saw that and his usual visage came back, he sat down in his chair and took another drag from his pipe. Bigby was controlled back then, I had already forgiven her as did Naruto. Jin let out a chuckle at that. They are on very good terms actually. Kakashi calmed down slightly and looked at the Hokage with all seriousness. Then Hokage-sama, what about the reports from people about his behavior? Kakashi asked, Jin's smile dropped again. That's their fault, they wanted a demon, and Naruto is more than happy to give them one, he won't take shit from people anymore. At that Kakashi's eyes widened once more. Then he don't have any loyalty toward the village toward what Sensei cherished above everything. Jin chuckled at that. Of course he don't, what were you expecting with people treating him like that, if he holds any loyalty, then it's for me and his friends. Jin took another drag from his pipe, he turned around in his chair and looked through the window. He warned, you better make sure to teach Naruto properly, or you will get Shinzam into your heart. Kakashi knowing that Hokage allowed Naruto on his team bowed and quickly left, Jin chuckled and slightly opened his eyes. This world, it seemed to be so calm right now I wonder how Ranjiku is doing he must to himself, just then another knock sounded from his door, causing Jin to sigh. For fuck's sake, a man can't even relax for a second. Jin raged inwardly, he calmed himself and turned toward the door. Enter. Jin said, the doors opened and Naruto walked in with a scowl on his face. Naisama, do you know that weirdo with silver hair, he was creeping the shit out of me. Jin chuckled and gestured toward the couch by the wall on his right, Naruto nodded his appreciation and sat down. Yes I know him, Hada Kakashi will be your sensei if he prove himself worthy that is. A smirk appeared on Naruto's face. Now that's Naisama I know, always planning, never doing something recklessly so, how you threatened him. Naruto asked, the anbu hidden in the shadows tensed, Jin chuckled and took a drag from his pipe. Shinzum to the heart, for those who know what it is works every damn time. Naruto began to laugh at that, soon Jin began to chuckle, for Anbu hidden around the room this sight was beyond terrifying. After several seconds both of them calmed down and looked at each other, Jin reached inside the desk and pulled out a jug of sake followed by two saucers, he set everything on the table and gestured for the chair before his desk. Um drink with me Naruto-kun, company is something an old person like me needs. Naruto chuckled at that. No shit Naisama, drinking with someone is a show of mutual respect, drinking alone is a problem. Naruto said sitting down on the chair, Jin poured the sake to each saucer and put it down, he looked at Naruto and smirked. So how good Anko was? July 16 15 years after Kikbi's attack graduation day. Naruto growled as he walked down the streets of Kanoha holding his head, unfortunately when he get drunk Kikbi also get drunk, so she couldn't purge the alcohol from his system, that's why the headache is killing him. Vic Chan are you okay? Naruto asked weakly, his brain not functioning at full power. Kikbi let out a long chain of profanities before groaning, a sound similar to something heavy slamming into the brick wall, sounded out inside Naruto's head. Okay, that answers my question Naruto thought sarcastically, which only earned him a growl. Fuck you. Kikbi said angrily, Naruto smirked. Every time he replied back smugly, Kikbi just stayed silent. Soon Naruto arrived into the academy and found his classroom, ignoring the looks he was getting Naruto walked to his usual seat beside Hinata, today however his seat was already occupied. Come on Hinata, forget about this loser and go out with me, what's so great about him anyway? Naruto growled at this. But I said something before didn't I, get away from Hinata. 
Naruto said coldly, the temperature around him quickly dropped causing few people near them to shiver. Kibo upon seeing Naruto quickly get off the chair and ran toward his previous seat in the corner, just then the temperature returned to normal. DSK, looser. Naruto muttered under his breath and sat down beside Hinata who immediately brightened. Naruto-kun. She greeted him happily, Naruto glanced at her and smiled slightly. Good morning Hinata-chan, how was your training? He asked calmly, Hinata blushed slightly and began to play with her fingers. Be good, Fa father said that I'm making good progress. When she said that Naruto chuckled. That's my Hinata, here. He placed a paper bag on the desk in front of her, Hinata took a sniff, and her eyes went wide open, faster than anyone could see Hinata open the bag and began munching on the cinnamon roll that was inside, Shikamaru smirked at that. You're a big softy Naruto. He said teasingly and lay back down on the desk, Naruto blushed lightly and looked away from everyone. Shut up. He muttered, just then Aruka walked inside, but to everyone's surprise Mizuki wasn't there. Aruka sensei where is Mizuki-sensei? Ino asked, Aruka sighed and shook his head. Mizuki was executed for treason, that's all I can tell. When he said that many people gasped however Naruto began to grin, showing his slightly pointed teeth. Anyway, today are the final exams, first will be the writing test. Many people groaned at that, Hiruka ignored them, and in a poof of smoke a stack of papers appeared in his hands, he placed the stack on his desk and looked over the students. We start now. An hour later everyone waited for Hiruka to check the test and tell who the rookie of the year will be. Alright everyone. Haruka said loudly while standing up, he pulled out a piece of paper and smiled. The rookie of the year for boys is at that Sasuke smirked at Naruto and stood up, fangirls were about to shout in excitement when Naruto Uzumaki. At that everything stopped, Sasuke blinked once, then twice, finally his confusion was replaced by anger. What? That clan less dope did better than me, and Ichiha Sasuke shouted, Haruka sighed and looked at him sternly. Sasuke, sit down I will not tolerate that attitude in my class. At that Sasuke growled but decided not to argue, Naruto's little group all cheered for Naruto except Shikamaru, who muttered a quick new at Sakura, one of Sasuke's most loyal fangirls shook in anger. How dare he, humiliating Sasuke come like that, who does he think he is she thought angrily, Sasuke's thought were very similar. MMMM such anger radiating in this class, it's making me wet. Kikbi said inside Naruto's head which brought a smile to his face. You know what, fuck Sandame, after I get my headband I'm going to visit your Ahara sensei and I will give him so much of your chakra that he will be finished with your body in no time Naruto thought, Kikbi squealed in delight and began shouting I love you over and over again, Naruto turned her out and looked at his friends. It's not a big deal guys, I was just studying instead of brooding all day. Naruto said calmly, Sasuke heard that and just growled. Now, the rookie of the year for girls is Haika Hinata. At that Sakura was the one to stand up. What? How is that possible, I should get perfect score for this test. Hiruka sighed once more before he sent a glare at Sakura. Miss Haruno, I won't repeat myself, true you nearly get a perfect score, 99 points is nearly perfect, but Miss Hinata scored a perfect 100, just deal with it besides, there is still one part of the final exam, if by any chance Miss Hinata fail it, then the rookie title goes to you. Now, everyone go outside the classroom, the final test will be done in private. When Aruka said that everyone walked outside the classroom, after few minutes Aruka opened the door. Shikamaru Nara. He said simply and walked inside with Shikamaru following behind and closing the door. It will be a while. Naruto said simply, everyone from his group nodded. Hinata walked out from the classroom with a smile on her and a headband tied around her neck, unlike anyone else however her headband was different, it has black cloth along with black metal instead of normal one, and the village symbol was gold. Naruto smiled even wider upon seeing her. Good job Hinata, I knew you could do this. Naruto said and patted her head causing the girl to blush and began to play with her fingers. Then Naruto-kun Hinata muttered, but soon she closed her eyes and relished in the sensation on her head. Emgini a strange yet very cute sound escaped her mouth causing Naruto to freeze, when Hinata noticed what happened she covered her mouth and run off. Naruto, you're last. Haruka said and walked back inside, when Naruto didn't follow Haruka looked back and saw shock Naruto with a blush on his face. That was so fucking adorable. Naruto shouted inside his head, Kikbi huffed at that. I think so too damn that girl, now I'm getting soft. Kikbi muttered the last part under her breath. Naruto snapped out from his stupor and shook his head, he walked inside the classroom and saw Aruka sitting behind his desk, smiling at him. Now Naruto, perform a Kawarimi no JUTSU body replacement technique, Henge no JUTSU transformation technique, Bunshin no JUTSU clone technique of any type, and one more jutsu of your choice. Naruto nodded in understanding and disappeared in a poof of smoke, in his place a wooden log fell onto the floor. Is that good enough? Naruto asked from behind Aruka, he nodded and Naruto walked back into the front of Aruka's desk. Good, Kawarimi performed, now Henge. 
Naruto nodded and performed a series of three hand seals. And no jutsu. Naruto said calmly and a cloud of smoke enveloped him, the cloud quickly dispersed, and right before Iruka stood Jinichimaru in his hokage robes, Iruka stood up and examined the henge up close, nodding in satisfaction Iruka gave Naruto a thumb up, Naruto once more was enveloped in a cloud and returned back to normal. Naruto crossed index and middle finger of both of his hands. Page Bunshin no Jutsu. Naruto said the name of the technique and five small clouds of smoke appeared around Naruto, when the smoke cleared five identical copies of Naruto stood there. Haruka blinked few times and looked at Naruto. Naruto, where did you learn the jutsu? Haruka asked, Naruto just shrugged his shoulders. Okage taught me, my chakra reserves won't let me perform a normal bunshin, so he taught me something more powerful. Haruka nodded at the explanation and sat back down on his chair. Alright, three basic jutsu performed, do you want to end it or you have something to show? He asked, Naruto hummed in thought and nodded after few seconds, he raised his right hand with his palm facing upward, and after few seconds a spiraling sphere of chakra formed in his hand, Haruka stared at Naruto in shock as he performed a Rasengan. Nah Naruto that's it air rank offensive jutsu did Hokage taught you that? He asked, Naruto grinned and nodded, dispersing the Rasengan. Of course, who else? Haruka just nodded and handed Naruto the same headband as he gave to Hinata, Naruto's grin became even wider as he tied it to his forehead. Just remember, three days from now come to this class for team placement. Thanks Aruka sensei goodbye. Naruto said and quickly walked out from the classroom, Aruka just blinked and slumped into his chair. That kid, a perfect rookie of the year. He muttered. Naruto walked through the streets of Konoha with a smirk on his face, the sun will soon hide behind the horizon, yet the streets were still very crowded, many civilians glared at him, but upon seeing the headband they looked away, it was a clear indication to them someone was better than Sasuke Chiha, that was enough for them to not mess with him. I can't wait to finally walk free again, I so want to kill someone. Kikbi said in an overly excited voice, Naruto's smirk only widened. Yeah, me too after few more minutes of walking Nordo arrived at the Hokage tower and immediately went inside, upon reaching the office Naruto knocked. Enter Jin's voice sounded from behind the door, Naruto walked inside and blinked, standing before the Hokage was Fujinin, Kakashi Haddock, Asuma Suratobi, Iki Kurinai and surprisingly Anko Midarashi. But you're here Naruto-kun, Anko-san here asked for you. When Jin said that Anko grinned. Hey there hunk, tonight. She asked, everyone except Jin didn't know what that mean if their confused expressions was any indication. Sorry sweet cheeks, I have something to do outside the village. At Naruto's words Anko pouted. No fun. She muttered, Jin raised an eyebrow at Naruto. Where do you want to go Naruto? He asked, Naruto gave him a blank stare. The Karakura, where else? At that Jin nodded and looked at the pile of scrolls on his right. That reminds me, I have reports about Retsu Anahana, an old friend of mine, being seen in Karakura, I would like you to convince her to go back with you. At that Naruto raised his eyebrow. Is that a mission sweet? Every Jinin except Anko stared at Naruto with wide eyes, Jin smiled and handed Naruto the scroll. It's an air ank, so I would send you alone, but Retsu is well scary to say the least, that's why Anko here will go with you, when do you want to go? Naruto grinned at Anko who returned it. I wanted to go two hours from now, is that okay with you Anko-chan? He asked, Anko give him a thumb up. Sure hunk, just don't be late. With that Anko walked out from the office, Kakashi cleared his throat and looked at Hokage. Hokage-sama, is that wise, letting Naruto out from the village? He asked, the temperature around the room drastically dropped. haddock san if I didn't know better I would say that you want to keep Naruto inside the village like some sort of animal, but of course you are not so stupid are you? At that Kakashi gulped and bowed slightly. I'm sorry, Hokage-sama. As he said that the temperature returned to normal. See it wasn't so hard now, was it? Jin said cheerfully and took a drag from his pipe, Naruto looked over the scroll and pocketed it. Well then Naisama, I will be going now. With that said Naruto walked out, Asuma blinked and looked at Jin. Okajsama is Anko and Naruto you know. Jin's smile widened at that. Of course. With that said Jin lightly opened his eyes. Well then, now for team placement. Naruto sighed as he opened the door to his apartment, true it wasn't the best place available, but it was slightly above normal, there was only kitchen, bathroom and one bedroom, not much, but for Naruto it was enough. After taking of his sandals he turned left and walked inside the kitchen, Kikbi wanted the apartment to be dark, then that's what it is, the walls and ceiling are painted dark red, while from around waist down the walls are dark purple, that color combination is present in all the rooms, mahogany panels cover the floor in all apartment except for bathroom. The kitchen was also modern looking with dark themes, the windows were covered by dark red curtains, Naruto walked up to the window in the kitchen and opened the curtains. Hey Chan, just remember, don't get too excited on this trip, after we visit Urahara sensei we would search for this Retsu person who knows, if she's a goodie, then I wouldn't mind making her another of my mates, at that kick be pouted. 
your insatiable darling, how many women you will make into your mates. I know you want to make the Tanada girl your mate when she grows up a little, then there's this Anko person, she's very strong and very good in bed, there's also that Ino girl, it seems she likes you beside that I don't see anyone else worthy. Naruto chuckled at her words. Oh Kichan, you know me so well, you, Hinata, Anko and Ino, it's still not enough however, to restore Yuzushi Agakur to its former glory more Yuzumakis are needed Naruto thought with a serious expression, Kikbi raised her eyebrow before sighing. Narukan, go to the bedroom, we should talk face to face. Naruto nodded at that and walked out from the kitchen, he walked into the room on the right from the entrance and looked around, like the kitchen everything inside the bedroom was dark themed and rather spartan looking, on the left by the window was a king size bed with blood red bedsheet and pillows together with dark purple quilt. Looking right Naruto saw a black dresser by the wall and a small TV in the further corner. Naruto walked up to the dresser and placed his headband on top of it, then he walked up and laid down on the bed, he closed his eyes and relaxed. Naruto opened his eyes and looked at the ceiling similar to his own, he looked to his right and smiled. Laying beside him was a woman of around 168 centimeters in height, she is dark skinned with silky bloody red hair reaching to he ankles, she is looking at Naruto with red eyes that is slitted pupils just like Naruto. She wears formal red kimono adorned with white leaf patterns along the bottom, she's also barefooted. Kikbi traced circles on Naruto's chest with her finger, her fingernails are painted red, they are also slightly long and sharp like claws. Narukan, why is restoring Yuzushio so important to you? Kikbi asked, Naruto looked her in the eyes and smiled sadly. My mother was from there, I know that she wasn't the one to seal you inside me, so I forgave her already my father however is different matter, he not only caused me great pain, but also imprisoned you, I will correct his mistake. Kikbi sighed at that. You know I was controlled back then, he didn't have much choice however you're right, he made a mistake, he should just take me away from the village using that technique of his. At that Naruto chuckled and enveloped Kikbi in a hug. You know, if he did that then I wouldn't meet you so let's just forget about him. Kikbi nodded at his words and snuggled closer to Naruto. You're right as always, now let's just focus on my body and finding that Retsu woman. Naruto grinned at Kikbi and placed a gentle kiss on her lips. We can always focus on your body right now, I still have some time before leaving. Kikbi's pupils narrowed at that, she looked at Naruto and licked her lips. Yeah that's the best idea you could think of in here. She said seductively and reached her right hand toward Naruto's pants causing him to smirk, however she stopped suddenly and retreated her hand. Nah, let's do this when you get back, I can't distract you from the mission. Naruto pouted at that. You're mean again, I thought you were horny. He asked, Kikbi chuckled and patted his head. I was, but here both you and me tire out much faster, however when I get my body we can go all out. When she said that Naruto's eyes went wide for a few seconds before he smirked. Oh you sexy fox, so that was your plan. Naruto said and roughly kissed Kikbi who returned it with equal passion. Anko was walking toward the village gate with a grin on her face. Few days alone with Naruto, I will be limping for sure, but fuck that yeah, fuck she thought as she arrived at the gate where Naruto was already standing with a smirk on his face, he looked up at Anko, and his smirk widened. Anko-chan, you're here so let's go, faster we get there then we can relax sooner, and you know what I mean by relax at Naruto's words, Anko immediately had stars in her eyes, she grabbed Naruto and began to run outside the village. Chapter 3. Interesting Development. July 16 15 years after Kikbi's attack, Naruto and Anko made a considerable distance from the village, they left it three hours and moved south toward where Karakura town was, they were chatting at the start of the journey, but when they made some distance from Kanoha, and it was very hard to see they set a camp for the night. So Anko, what plan do you have? Naruto asked her, she turned from the campfire and grinned at him. You want to hear the plan? Naruto nodded quickly, the camp they set was placed on a small hill, Anko stood up and turned south, in the large distance away from them she saw lights of the Karakura town, her grin widened when she turned back to Naruto. Public sex Naruto's eyes went wide open at that, he slowly stood up and looked her in the eyes. You know that we can get in trouble for that? He asked, Anko closed her eyes and nodded, still grinning. Yep. She replied. You're just fucking with me. Naruto said in disbelief, Anko smirked. Every time. July 17 15 years after Kikbi's attack Karakura Town. Karakura Town, much bigger and more populated than Kanoha, a peaceful town, Naruto and Anko walked down the street while looking around, they arrived here around an hour ago, and they still couldn't find Urahara's shop, finally Naruto snapped. Oh come on, how hard it can be to find one shop. Naruto shouted while pulling on his hair, Anko sighed and looked at Naruto. Look, I know it's frustrating, but Naruto Anko began but blinked as she looked at his face. That thing on your head is glowing. Just like she said, the headpiece Naruto is using to hold his hair in place is glowing in a bright blue, while the kanji on it glows bright red. Naruto tensed and his eyes went wide open. Anko stay here. 
Naruto said and blurred out from her sight faster than Anko could notice, she blinked and looked at the place he stood before. It wasn't Shunshin she said in amazement, then an inhuman roar grabbed her attention, she looked around and noticed that people heard that too, without any hesitation she went to investigate. Naruto flickered from roof to roof as he moved toward the source of Riatsu he felt. He jumped off from the roof and draw his sword with his right hand, in the clearing right before him, several creatures with white masks gathered around a very tall man of around 215 centimeters in height, with a thin and lanky body. His face is set in a huge smile which reveals his upper teeth. His black hair hangs past his shoulders, concealing the left side of his face and a large white eye patch with one exposed dark gray eye. His clothing consists of a jacket with an overblown spoon-like hood and an opening starting at the neckline, showing most of his midsection and closing at his waist. He wears the hakama, but the ends of his pant legs close inside extended and curved boots. What intrigued Naruto however was the weapon in his right hand, it takes the form of a giant axe-like weapon, bearing two crescent moon-shaped blades fused together at the backs, with a large loop chain connected to the shaft at the end of the handle, the chain is connected to the man's waist. The man placed his hand on the ground and after few seconds looked up at Naruto, the man stood up and rested his weapon on his shoulder. You there, you seem to be a strong opponent, why don't we fight? The man shouted at Naruto who frowned and jumped down before the man and the creatures. In a rancor I thought your kind died out. Naruto asked, his face turned into a scowl. You can say that kill him. As the man said that the creatures lunged at Naruto, he took the stance and rushed at the creatures, slicing the closest to him with easy. Limit of the thousands hands, respectful hands, unable to touch the darkness. Shooting hands unable to reflect the blue sky. Naruto muttered as he began to cut the creatures, one of the bigger ones tried to slam its fist at Naruto, but he flickered out from that place and slashed it vertically through the middle, killing it. The road that basks in light, the wind that ignited the embers, time that gathers when both are together, there is no need to be hesitant, obey my orders. Naruto flickered and appeared above a massive turtle-like creature, he slammed his sword through its head and jumped away, the creature started to turn into black particles, Naruto turned and performed a heel kick on the creature behind him, shattering its mask. Light bullets, eight bodies, nine items, book of heaven, diseased treasure, great wheel, gray fortress tower. Aim far away, scatter brightly and cleanly when fired Naruto finished the incantation as he appeared some distance away from the group of creatures. He pointed his left hand at them and his eyes narrowed. Pad number 91. Senj Kuntentain Way of Destruction number 91. Thousand Hand Bright Heaven Culling Seer, Naruto shouted, ten pink energy points appeared around Naruto and fired at the group, the energy collided with the group and created a devastating explosion of pink energy that teared the ground few meters from the explosion, Naruto then turned toward the man with a scowl on his face. What's your name punk, Maya's Noitra Gilga. Noitra said with a wide smile on his face, Naruto pointed his sword at the man. Uzumaki Naruto why did you bring hollows to this town? Naruto asked, the man's smile only grew wider which infuriated Naruto. For fun, why else? The man shouted and rushed at Naruto with Naruto doing the same, they clashed their respective weapons, but Naruto was quickly being overpowered, Naruto narrowed his eyes, and an orange energy started to appear around his body, it seemed to only excite Noitra even more. The Shinigami you're a fucking Shinigami. I knew you would be fun. Noitra shouted and began to press onto Naruto even more, Naruto cursed and jumped away from Noitra, when the weapon passed him Naruto rushed back at Noitra and swung at his chest, only for his sword to grind on his skin like a steel, Naruto's eyes went wide from shock, and Noitra used this moment to backhand Naruto. He flew away and rolled on the ground few times before stopping and quickly standing up. Naruto looked forward and quickly jumped back as Noitra's weapon slammed into the ground where he stood before, Naruto narrowed his eyes and rushed at Noitra, who still had that infuriating smile on his face, Naruto slickered and appeared inside Noitra's guard, shocking him slightly, Naruto gripped his sword tightly with both hands and with a roar slashed upward at Noitra, like before the slash didn't do much except grinding on Noitra's skin, but when Naruto's blade reached Noitra's chin, it launched him few meters into the air, shocking him even more. That punk how? Noitra asked himself as he flew up, Naruto pointed his left hand at him. Pad number 4. By Akurai way of destruction number 4. Pale lightning, Naruto shouted and a huge bolt of lightning shot at Noitra, before Noitra could react the lightning slammed into his and caused an explosion. After few seconds Noitra fell down from the smoke and slammed into the ground, Anko just arrived on the scene, but decided to watch, for several seconds nothing happened, and Naruto sighed in relief, he was about to sheath his sword when Kikbi's voice caught his attention. Naruto look out. She shouted, Naruto draw back his sword and watched as yellow energy envelop Noitra. Inner. Santa Teresa pray. Praying mantis, Noitra shouted and a pillar of yellow energy shot up into the air, completely covering Noitra and creating a small shockwave. Sensing the trouble Naruto grabbed his sword with both hands and held it in front of himself, orange energy began to emanate around him. 
Kai to Binretsu. Rage gnoj by collapse and divide. Ten tails of lightning beast, Naruto shouted, a pillar of orange energy covered him completely, Anko felt the power the two began emanating and became scared. What the hell, that power it's around cage level Anko thought, the pillar of energy covering Noitra disappeared, he stood there without any scratch on him, he gained an extra set of arms, which took on an insect-like carapace and clawed hands, with each hand holding a large scythe-like weapon as well. The scythes themselves resemble the appendages of a praying mantis and have a small golden tassel at the end of each staff. He also gains a golden marking extending from his forehead to below his right eye, as well as a pair of horns on his head resembling a crescent moon, with his left horn longer than his right. He gains several white tendril-like appendages around his torso which extend over the sides of his abdomen. A maniacal smile stretched his lips. Just then Naruto's pillar of energy also disappeared, Naruto stood there slightly battered, but what changed was his weapon, instead of Ndachi in his right hand, as a double-edged broadsword with a flat top, making it impossible to stab something. The handle of this sword is wrapped in black bandages and has a white tassel attached to the base of the hilt, the tassel takes form of ten bone-like segmented tails, each ending with a ring in which a tiny blue orb is embedded. The blade is completely black, and in the middle of the blade near the top is a small hole to which a short red rosary-like cord is attached, hanging from the cord is a red paper talisman with strange black markings on it. Naruto rested the blade on his shoulder with easy, shocking Anko. The hell, that sword is as big as him, how can he wield it so easily? Anko asked herself, Noitra looked at Naruto, and his smile widened to humanly impossible size. Let's fight to death shall we Noitra shouted and rushed at Naruto who just stood there, he pointed his sword at Noitra, and sighed. Doha dot dividing blade, Naruto said calmly, the talisman began to glow in a bright red color, that glow quickly spread through the entire blade, leaving out the hilt. When Noitra swung his scythes at Naruto he lazily swung his sword at Noitra who grinned, to his surprise however Naruto's sword passed through his arms and scythes, Naruto flickered behind Noitra. Wh what? Noitra said aloud, after few seconds Noitra's scythes broke in pieces, his forearms from the elbows down soon followed, falling to the ground. Each place that Naruto slashed at had a red glow on it, Noitra looked at the stumps of his arms for a few seconds before looking back at Naruto, Naruto swung his sword across Noitra's abdomen, it passed right through him without any resistance. You loose and now you're dead. When Naruto said that a bright crimson line appeared where Naruto slashed, after few seconds Noitra's torso separated from the rest of his body and fall down onto the ground. Naruto's sword turned back to normal, and he immediately began to feel the strain on his body, causing him to fall down beside Noitra. Be damn you were strong like a monster Naruto said weakly, Noitra looked at Naruto, fighting off the sleepiness. How? You couldn't even scratch me before what are you? Naruto chuckled at the question. My Zanpakutan reflects my will to move forward despite any obstacles, I just cut down the obstacle that's the power of my sword, no matter how strong the defense I can cut through it without any problem. Naruto finished his explanation with a groan, Noitra laughed slightly at that. I see I just had a bad luck to fight you thanks kid that was awesome, with that Noitra grew an additional right hand and placed it on Naruto's head, the yellow energy gathered around Noitra's palm before sinking into Naruto, enveloping in a yellow glow that soon began to turn orange. After several seconds Noitra took his head away from Naruto and smiled. Take my energy I won't need it anymore, and you could use it for your ghouls, also when you get time go to Izushi Agakur or what's left of it, Noitra began coughing after he finished speaking, Naruto turned toward him and smirked. You won't live long you bastard I cut through your kidneys and most vital organs just accept it and die already. Noitra smirked slightly at that. At least I died in a fight with that Noitra closed his eyes and released his last breath. Naruto cursed slightly as his sight began to blur. Ah that's why I don't use my shikai initial release, so much I will feel it later on Naruto said to himself and closed his eyes. Anko finally walked out into the clearing and run up to Naruto, she looked around and noticed the destruction that happened from the fight. Oh should better get going. Anko said to herself and picked up Naruto, however before she could go away from the clearing, she felt two people behind her. Put the boy down or die. One of the people said, Anko turned around and saw two girls behind her, she couldn't help but raise an eyebrow in interest. Both of them were slightly shorter than Naruto and appeared to be twins, the two of them are almost identical in appearance. However, one has short red hair, while the other has longer blue hair which is parted in pigtails. On their heads they have masks that act as some kind of headband, both of which go vertically down the middle of their heads before reaching their eyebrows. The masks also act as a sheath for their weapons, sitting behind their head horizontally. They both wear the same outfit, which is a sleeveless white jacket, elbow-length gloves, white bracelets on each wrist, sock-like stockings, black high-heeled boots and short schoolgirl-themed skirts. Of this, the skirt, stockings and gloves are colored to represent their respective hair color. Who are you, what do you want from Naruto? 
Anko asked with a growl, the red-haired girl near out her and reached for the hilt on the back of her mask, she grabbed it and pulled out, a sword coated in flames appeared from the hilt at which Anko gulped, the red head pointed the sword at Anko. My name is Yang and this is my sister Yin, is what we heard before true. That boy's name is Naruto Uzumaki. The girl asked, Anko tensed slightly and pulled out a kunai from the sleeve of her coat. And what if he is? Anko asked angrily, Yang raised her eyebrows. Depending on your answer we will let you live. Yang said calmly, Yin sighed and looked at Anko with an apathetic expression. He is anything else. Anko asked, her senses are screaming at her to run, but she ignored them, Yin nodded slightly before turning to her sister. He's in Yuzumaki, I can feel it let's go, we're done here. Yin spoke calmly and began to walk away, Yang sighed and sheathed the sword. One more question. Yang asked, Anko relaxed slightly and nodded. Sure. Yang looked at Naruto sleeping on Anko's shoulder. Who his parents are, I sense power similar to our own inside of him. At that question Anko blinked, she looked at Naruto on her shoulder for few seconds before looking at Yang, Yin was standing few meters from them with her back turned toward them. They don't talk about his father, however he said few times that his mother was Kashina Yuzumaki. At that both Yang and Yin looked at Naruto with wide eyes. Was? Yin asked, Anko nodded with a sad smile on her face. His parents died 15 years ago. Yin nodded and grabbed her sister's arm. Let's go Nichan our job is done. Yang nodded, with that the both girls disappeared with a sound of statics. Anko breathed out a sigh of relief and looked around. Well then, what now? She said to herself and walked away from the clearing toward the more populated part of town. July 17 15 years after Kikbi's attack Kanoha. Jin was relaxing in his chair as always after finishing with the paperwork, he couldn't help but chuckle at the way Naruto come up with to deal with the paperwork shadow clones, it allowed Jin to relax during the day. Okajama. A calm voice reached his ears, Jin looked at the door and took a drag from his pipe, standing in the doorway was a woman of around 161 centimeters in height, she's pale skinned with bright green eyes, thin black hair tied in small ribbons by the side of her face, with a back cut short lustrous lips and surprisingly slender body. She wears black sleeveless shirt with a high collar, black skin tight pants, white leather belt around her waist, to which a silver five-pointed cross pendant is attached, as well as black boots that sport a small heel to give her a few extra inches. On top of this she wears a white hooded coat that reaches down around her knees, the coat also have long sleeves that covers her hands. She also wears a pair of half-rimmed glasses with oval-shaped lenses and a black scarf around her neck with white five-pointed cross on both ends. I think I remember you from somewhere. Jin said with raised eyebrow, the woman nodded and a tiny smile graced her lips. Yes, I'm Lisbeth Goldenrod, the librarian in Kanoha's library and also Naruto's friend. The woman said meekly, Jin raised his eyebrow at her. Friend? Not more. He asked, the woman blushed slightly before looking around. I know about Naruto's more colorful than normal sexual life, I'm in fact one of his partners. At that Jin chuckled. I see well then, why did you came here, whatever it is then it must be very important if you came here. Lisbeth nodded and took a deep breath to calm herself. I wanted to ask you about Naruto, I didn't saw him in the village since yesterday, and I wanted to talk to him about something important. At that Jin's eyes opened slightly, he took a drag from his pipe and grinned slightly. You're not pregnant are you? Jin asked to which Lisbeth blushed madly and crossed her arms under her D-cup breasts, she began to shuffle her right foot nervously. And no Naruto always use protection, he told me that he will not risk his child going through the same treatment as he did, I just came to ask where he is and when he will come back. Jin nodded and took another drag from his pipe. He went to Karakura town for personal business, he should get back to Konoha in two to three days without any delay. Jin said with his ever-present smile back in place, Lisbeth nodded and turned to live when Jin stopped her. Lisbeth san if you love him just tell him, he will be overjoyed. Lisbeth blushed and nodded, she quickly walked out from the office. When she left Jin sported a shit-eating grin. What a beast, yet another woman fall in love with him. Jin said to himself and took another drag from his pipe, after few seconds he released a thin stream of smoke from his mouth. Let's see, from what Naruto told me Kikbi wants to have his kid strange woman, I pray for the soul of one stupid enough to go near her children with malicious intents, there is also Hinata Haika and Ino Yamanaka, from what I heard both girls have feelings for him there are also several civilian women, but Naruto is only using them for his goals, so it's not important Jin thought as he took another drag from his pipe, his eyes have a far away look. There is Anko not sure if it's just sex or something more, however knowing Naruto she could easily fall in love if he so wanted, and now there's this Lisbeth woman here, a Quincy interesting Jin thought, and looked at the clock hanging from the wall. Well then, I should go home now. He said as he stood up and began to walk from the office. Thank you very much. Lisbeth said as she walked out from the bakery near her place, surprisingly she lives in the same apartment complex as Naruto, so she often visits him. As she walked she couldn't help but blush as she recalled the conversation with Hokage. 
Naruto's child she thought with a gentle smile on her face, however that smile soon faded when she looked around the villagers. It's their fault Naruto hate this place so much, if only something could wipe them out she thought with a scowl, the scowl only deepened when she felt several pairs of eyes on her, they weren't civilians for sure. Lisbeth sighed and turned into an alleyway, after walking for a few more seconds she stopped, a paper bag in her right hand, while her her left hung limply at her side, several figures landed behind, and before her, each had an ambu mask on their faces, Lisbeth looked at them coldly. You will come with us. One of them, apparently male, said without a hint of emotion in his voice. And if I refused? Lisbeth asked, her tone not changing even for a second. The ambu slowly reached for their tanto. I think you don't have a choice. The one from before said, Lisbeth only sighed. So that fossil wants to ensure Naruto-kun's loyalty by holding me captive, as much as a vision of Naruto reaping through root members, just to reach me is interesting I must refuse. As she finished speaking from the left sleeve of her coat a silver handle without blade slid out, Lisbeth effortlessly caught it, and a blade of bright blue energy appeared. Well then, let's dance. Lisbeth said coldly as Anbu rushed at her with their blades in hands. A few minutes later Lisbeth was happily munching on a strawberry bun, not even a cut or drop of blood on her or her clothes, a slightly drunk man stumbled into the alley Lisbeth walked out with, few seconds later the same man began to scream his throat out. Chapter 4. Kikbi's Body and Unhappy Reunion. July 17 15 years after Kikbi's attack Karakura Town, Naruto groaned as he opened his eyes, looking around he saw the familiar ceiling of Urahara's shop, he looked to his left and saw his Hayori neatly folded down and his Zanpakutam on top of it. Good morning Naruto-kun. A sickly sweet voice said from his right, Naruto tensed slightly as he looked in the direction of the voice. Sitting there in a cross-legged position is Anko with arms crossed over her chest and a disturbingly wide smile on her face, however Naruto couldn't complain much as he had a clear view beneath her skirt. If you're wondering how we get here I will explain when you finished his fight with that guy I took you into the town to find a place where we could rest, then that with man with mustache saw us and took us here, then that you're a hard guy explained everything about what happened, about Shinigami, Hollow, Aranker, Quincy about everything, I waited two hours before you woke up just to teach you about holding a secret from me. Anko said with a disturbingly sweet voice, Naruto only gulped. Several minutes later Naruto walked out from the room dressed in his Hayori and his sword in place, he walked down the corridor toward the entrance and opened the first door to the left, walking inside he saw a tatami covered floor with a round low table in the middle, sitting on the floor by the table, was a man of around 183 centimeters in height, with lean build, light skin and grey eyes. His hair is messy and light blonde, almost pale, with strands framing the sides of the face and hanging between his eyes, and he has chin stubble. He wears a dark coat, which sports a white diamond pattern along its bottom half, with a dark green shirt and pants underneath. The man has a small paper fan in hand that he covers his face with. He also wears traditional Japanese wooden sandals and a striped dark green and white bucket hat. Urahara sensei, good evening. Naruto said while looking at the clock hanging from the wall which shows 7 pm. The man smiled behind the fan. Welcome Naruto-kun, to what do I own the pleasure of your visit? Urahara asked, Naruto just looked at him blankly to which Urahara sighed. Stubborn as always, let's go to the basement. With that said Urahara stood up and walked out from the room with Naruto following right behind without a word, they walked toward the back of the shop where Urahara opened a shaft and walked down the hidden stairs, after few seconds they arrived at an enormous room with rock terrain and walls, along with ceiling painted to resemble the sky. They walked to the bottom of the stairs, where Urahara reached toward the storage seal on his left hand, from which he unsealed a white coffin with a transparent lid, he placed the coffin on the ground, letting Naruto take a good look, when he did Naruto's eyes went wide open. Inside the coffin was a perfect replica of Kikbi's body, but unlike the Kikbi in Naruto's mind, she wears simple white yukata. I must say that the Kenjutsu of this world is amazing, combined with Kidden, I was able to create a seal on this Gigai that will absorb the nearby Raishi in small amounts and convert it into Chakra using Kikbi's Chakra as an example, as we can only channel the Kikbi's soul with only a tiny bit of Chakra, it will help her restore her energy faster, without risking any damage to environment. As Urahara explained Naruto stared at the body with a soft smile, after few seconds he looked at Urahara. Now what? He asked, Urahara smiled slightly. Just place your hands on Kikbi's body and channel some of her chakra, she should be able to transfer her soul to the new body without hurting you. Naruto nodded and opened the lid, he placed both of his hands on the Gigai's abdomen and closed his eyes. Be ready, Kikchan. Naruto asked in his thoughts, Kikbi nodded with a wide smile on her face. Let's do this Naruto-kun. She said causing Naruto to chuckle, he began to channel the Kikbi's chakra into her new body, and Kikbi moved with the flow of her chakra, forcing her soul into the new container. 
Back in Kanoha, one hears in Siratobi was an elder man who recently retired as a Hokage to spend rest of his life in peace that peace however was broken as looked in shock at the glass orb at his side, he was currently sitting at the porch of his house when the orb began to glow and showed an image that shocked him, it showed Naruto as he knelt in front of a red-haired woman in a coffin, his attention however was more focused on the red chakra flowing into the seemingly dead body, after watching for several seconds his eyes went wide open as the woman's eyes fluttered open, revealing red eyes that his slitted pupils. The woman quickly sit up and hugged Naruto before kissing him, however then the woman stood up and stretched, Hiruzen's eyes nearly popped out from their sockets when nine orange fox tails shot out from the woman's waist. Kentucky Kikbi Hiruzen shouted in shock, after few more seconds the image inside the orb vanished which caused Hiruzen to frown. There was some type of barrier, the chakra used in the trigger seal was containing more than half of my overall reserves, so the barrier must be powerful to break contact so quickly. He mused to himself as he stood up, he quickly left his house and walked toward the Hokage office. Kikbi stretched some more showing her slender body to Naruto who was grinning. Finally Kikbi stopped stretching and looked at Urahara coldly, which caused him to flinch, after all, even if Kikbi wasn't at her peak right now, she could easily wipe the floor with him. I hope you made this body fertile, after all I plan on having Naruto's kit sometime in near future. When she said that Urahara nodded quickly. Of course, however for now it's rather unadvised for you to have a sexual intercourse, your body must adapt to the movement after all. Kikbi nodded and looked at Naruto who was glancing at her with eyes full of love and lust, she blushed slightly as his gaze traveled over her body. Naruto-kun, wasn't there something else you came here for? Kikbi asked, Naruto shook his head quickly and looked at Urahara. Kurumi is right we also came looking for someone. Both Urahara and Kikbi raised an eyebrow at him. Kurumi Kurumi. Both said in confusion, Naruto blushed slightly and began to scratch the back of his head. Well, I can't go around calling you Kikbi, so I came up with something else, also Kikbi is more like a title than a name. A look of realization crossed over Kikbi's Kurumi's face as he said that, she nodded and grinned at Naruto. Kurumi I like the sound of that. Kurumi said and looked down at her clothes, she sighed and snapped her fingers, flames covered her body, and when they died down Kurumi had the same red kimono as in Naruto's mind. She looked at Naruto once more, he quickly nodded and looked at Urahara. Urahara-sensei, I'm searching for a woman called Retsu Anahana, you know something about her. As he said that Urahara went sickly pale, even his fan couldn't hide that. Then Naruto-kun why are you a searching for her? He asked with a lightly stutter, Naruto rose an eyebrow at that, but continued anyway. Naisama wanted her back in Kanoha for something, do you know why? At Naruto's question Urahara gulped and nodded. Anahana-san is a medical specialized Shinigami right now at least she was also famous as Uchiru Kenpachi. At that Naruto's eyes went wide and he became as pale as Urahara. He Kenpachi are you sure Naruto asked with panic clear in his voice, Urahara gulped once more and nodded. Kurumi was watching everything with an amused expression. Certainly, however that was long ago, she was tired of bloodshed, so she became a medic rivaling Tsunade Senju, in fact she's here right now, resting in one of the room before moving somewhere else. Naruto nodded at that and slowly stood up from the ground, he looked at Kurumi and smiled. Let's go Kurumi-chan, we must talk to that Retsu woman and go back to Kanoha. Kurumi nodded at that, and the three of them walked out from the underground training room. When they arrived back to the ground level Naruto gathered Anko who was limping slightly, she knew about Kikbi and her relationship with Naruto however coming face to face with a being that nearly destroyed Kanoha was still terrifying. So you're Kikbi? Anko asked carefully to which Kurumi nodded, she hide her tails after coming back up. Exactly, however I would appreciate if you call me Kurumi. Anko nodded quickly, the group of four arrived at the room near the entrance and walked inside, standing there while looking through the window was a woman of around 159 centimeters in height with slender body, blue eyes and black long hair, worn as a large braid down the front of her body. She wears black kimono with a white haori over it and a white obi around her waist. She turned toward the group with a gentle look on her face. She was a kenpachi. She don't look like one, and she's kinda hot Naruto thought, he cleared his throat and stepped forward carefully. You're on a Hana Retsu right? Naruto asked, Retsu smiled at him. Depending on who's asking. She asked as she turned fully toward Naruto, he quickly looked her over. Am she's hot he whispered to himself, Retsu however heard him and chuckled. Flatter. She said simply, Naruto smiled lightly and shook his head. Anyway, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, I was asked by Jinichimaru, current Hokage, to bring you to Konoha. At first I wanted to use force if necessary, but I have a feeling it won't work on you, that's why I have to ask can you go back with me to Kanoha. Naruto said, a slightly frown appeared on his face when he said Kanoha Retsu hummed in thought and looked the group over, when her eyes landed on Naruto she looked incredibly focused, after several long seconds of silence she nodded. Alright, I will go, after all I have nothing better to do. At that Naruto released a sigh of relief, he was about to say something more when a male voice interrupted him. 
Urahara Senpai. What is going on, why are we still alive? Urahara winced at the person the voice belonged to. Damn so I was right, Minato set a contract with the Shinigami so that their souls could be released when Kikbi left the seal, which would be upon Naruto's death under normal circumstances, Urahara thought and turned toward Minato, he was looking just as the day he died, the same can be said about Kishina, who was standing beside Minato. Naruto looked around and his eyes became wide open from shock. Haka-chan? He asked, Kishina looked at Naruto and gasped. Naruto-chan is that you? Kishina asked and stepped forward, Kurumi observed everything in interest. Okay, it's not so bad, I know Naruto loves his mother, but if that bastard Minato say something Kurumi thought and shivered slightly. It can easily go bad of that I'm sure Kurumi watched as Naruto tried to contain his emotions, he took a step forward. Oh god you grow up so much. Kishina said and hugged Naruto, he at first was slightly shocked, but after several seconds he returned the hug. Then mom Naruto whispered and buried his face in her shoulder, which brought a smile to Kishina's face, she began to caress the back of his head. Naruto-chan it's okay now, I'm right here. Naruto only nodded weakly, Minato smiled upon seeing this and opened his mouth to speak, Kurumi's eyes went wide open from shock. Oh shit she thought in fear. Yo, Naruto, don't forget about your father. Minato said cheerfully, Urahara and Kurumi fascinated. My why didn't you shut up? Urahara said with a sigh, the cheerful atmosphere inside the room vanished immediately as the temperature dropped drastically, Naruto pulled out from the hug and showed his cold red eyes to everyone, he stepped closer to Minato. Yeah I nearly forget about you bastard. As he finished speaking Naruto disappeared for a second before appearing in front of Minato and slammed his fist right in his face, the force behind the punch launched Minato back through the thin wall of the opposite room, where he slammed into the outer wall and stopped. Naruto-chan stop right now. Kishina shouted, but it fall on deaf ears as Naruto approached his father, Urahara stepped in front of Naruto to stop him, but Naruto quickly incapacitated him with a kunai to his leg. The next person that tried to stop him was Kurumi however Naruto didn't even acknowledge her as he slammed his fist into her stomach, knocking the wind out of her. She fell down onto the floor holding her stomach, Naruto reached Minato again and cocked his fist back, he was about to hit him once more, but a hand caught his wrist. I think it's enough, look what you've done. The one to stop the attack was Retsu, she gave Naruto a scolding look. Naruto's eyes turned blue again as a realization hit him. Kurumi. He shouted and appeared beside Kurumi in an instant, he quickly knelt down and helped her up. Kurumi, are you okay? He shouted in fright as Kurumi looked up at him with a gentle smile. It's okay Naru-kun, I'm fine. She said as she stood up, Naruto looked at her for a few more seconds before sighing. Alright, let's just go. He said and stood up along with Kurumi, without any other word he walked out, Kurumi sent a glare at Minato before following Naruto. He stepped out before the shop and took a deep breath to calm himself, he reached into his Hayori and pulled out a tanto with black blade and hilt, the hilt is covered in several seals. Narukun, is everything alright? Kurumi asked, Naruto looked back at her and smiled. I'm fine, I was just slightly surprised is all, I know Urahara can do pretty crazy stuff, so why not resurrect people? He said with a shrug of his shoulders, he began to walk away from Urahara's shop and walked into an alley some distance away, Kurumi was even more confused by his behavior when he looked around and jumped to the roof, she quickly followed him with some troubles which Naruto noticed. He stopped and faster than she could react Naruto swooped her off her feet and lifted her up into his arms, Kurumi smiled at him. So, Narukun, what are you doing? She asked, Naruto smiled and began to look around for something. I wanted to place a beacon for ANSHIYA Dark Field, I don't want anyone to notice it. As he finished speaking Naruto placed Kurumi down and stabbed the tanto from before into the concrete, the blade slid into the roof until only the hilt remained. Naruto stood up and looked around. Anko should find us soon, I just hope that she won't take Kasan or that bastard with her. As he said the Kurumi looked at him with raised eyebrow. I thought you love your mother? Naruto nodded quickly. Yes, she gave birth to me, but that bastard will surely go with her and the other way around. Kurumi let out a quick o and looked at her feet. You know, come to think of it now I'm free so we should use protection, after all I really don't want to give birth in that village. Naruto's eyes went slightly wider before he nodded. Yeah, and knowing you it will be a serious strain to my account. Kurumi grinned at the comment, seconds later Anko arrived with Retsu right behind, however Naruto frowned slightly when he saw Kishina and Minato. Okay Naisama will need a good cover-up story for this one. Naruto muttered to himself and hovered his hand above the tanto, Minato was about to ask what he was doing, but a glare from Kurumi stopped him. And Shia. Naruto said quietly, in a span of few seconds a black mist erupted from the hilt and formed a circle under their feet, then a pillar of mist shoot up, and the mist thinned out after a moment, the group was nowhere in sight, and only the tanto was left, its hilt sucking the light around it. What is the meaning of this, Jin? 
Hiruzen shouted as he walked inside Jin's office, the Hokage as always was smoking, he took a slow drag from his pipe and let out the smoke after few seconds. What do you mean? Jin asked feigning innocence, Hiruzen growled before he slammed his hands on top of the desk. The Kikbi, Naruto gave it a body to move around in. At that Jin sighed. Not it old man, Kikbi is a female. Hiruzen only shook his head. It's not important as soon as they get back I'm sealing her again. When Hiruzen said that Jin's smile disappeared, he leaned forward in his chair and slightly opened his eyes. Watch your tongue, I knew about your dealing with Dan's, I killed him yesterday. At that Hiruzen paled for a second before an angry scowl appeared on his face. Do you think I will fear you, Dan's was a paranoid fool, sooner or later someone would get a lucky shot at killing him. Jin only smirked cruelly. Oh, about that, he have plenty of time to prepare as I walked through his base and slaughtered his people, in the end even this Sharingan couldn't help him. Jin said and took a step toward Hiruzen, however he couldn't get any closer, because a pillar of black mist appeared inside his office which caused him to grin. The mist quickly cleared revealing Naruto and the rest, Jin's grin however quickly turned into a cold visage, as he saw Minato and Kashina. I knew that bastard Urahara planned something, good to see you again Kamai, Kishina-chan. He said somewhat coldly and looked at Naruto who was staring intently at the door. You can go Naruto, I see that you're not in the mood for talking. With that Naruto nodded and walked out quickly followed by Kurumi, Minato blinked few times upon looking at Jin. Jin senpai. You're the Hokage. Minato asked, but Jin ignored him. Retsu-san, good to see you again. Jin said with a grin spreading at his face, Retsu lightly shook her head and looked at the door. If it's not a problem for you, everything happens so fast that I still don't know what's going on. Jin nodded and gestured toward the chair in front of his desk. It will take a while, and you Saratobi, go home till my patience is good. Chapter 5. Truth Revealed. July 17 15 years after Kikbi's attack on a Hagakur, she's a what a loud scream from Kashina sounded through the village from the inside of Hokage's office, everyone in the village heard that, but they shrugged and blamed it on someone from her and her family. Inside Hokage's office Jin sighed and looked at Kashina with a glare. Is that a problem? He asked coldly, Kashina growled in anger as she bailed her fists. Problem I just learned that not only my son was abused by this village, but he also sleeps with several women. Kikbi included. How could I have no problem with this? Retsu and Jin sighed at that, Jin took a drag from his pipe before he realized it was empty, he dumped what left inside the pipe into an ashtray and quickly refiled it before he lit it up again and took a deep drag. It's what this village did to him, he searched for acceptance where he can also, Kikbi was the one to save him. At that the shinobi gathered inside the room looked shocked to the core everyone except Kishina who glared at him. Explain. She said coldly, Jin sighed once more and shook his head. Alright it all happened around four years ago, after a certain event that I really don't want to talk about, Naruto tried to kill himself. That earned several gasps, but Jin only took a drag from his pipe and shook his head sadly. Hikbi was the one to save him, she believed in him, showed him what love was, it's only because of her that Naruto is still with us, however around the same time Naruto began to openly resent the village, when someone once started a fight with him he said one sentence, if you want a demon you will get it, and then this village will be no more Minato paled upon hearing that, he glanced at the door and was about to go find Naruto, but something very sharp touched his neck, drawing some blood. Everyone looked at Jin in shock as his sword extended to Minato's neck. Hold right there Kamai, it's better if you don't talk to Naruto. Jin said calmly, Minato opened his mouth to speak, but a glare from Jin stopped him. Right now only Kashina-chan has any chance at talking with him. He said and looked at Kashina with a smile. He loves you Kashina as it wasn't your idea to seal the Kikbi inside him, however he is slightly angry that you just locked Kikbi up and didn't talk to her, maybe then you would have noticed that she was controlled. Kashina nodded weakly as few tears rolled down her cheeks. Naruto opened the door to his apartment with a sigh, he walked inside with Kurumi right behind him, he took off his sandals and walked inside his bedroom worry he flopped face first onto the bed. Kurumi sighed as she lay down next to him and wrapped her tails around them, pulling them closer to each other, Naruto sighed in content as he turned his body toward her and wrapped his arms around her waist. What would I do without you Kurumi? He said and kissed her lightly onto her lips, Kurumi moaned slightly into the kiss and wrapped her arms around his neck, pulling him closer. Their makeout session began to get even more heated as lust began to cloud their minds, they stopped kissing Gore just a second, and they gazed into each other's eyes. Kurumi I love you. He said almost breathlessly and began to once more ravish her lips, Kurumi's eyelids slowly closed as yet another moan escaped through her lips. I know Narukan I love you too, she thought happily as Naruto's left hand slide between her legs, few minutes later shots of pleasure could be heard from Naruto's place. July 19 15 years after Kikbi's attack on Hagakur, Naruto walked to the academy with a grin on his face, he didn't saw any of his parents for a few days which was good, he wouldn't know how to react. He also didn't heard about them yet so Jin probably waited for something to happen. Naruto-kun. 
He heard from behind him, he smiled upon recognizing her voice. Anata Chan, good morning. He said cheerfully and turned toward her, she ran up to him with a light blush on her face. Good morning Naruto-kun, I couldn't find you for few days she stopped suddenly and sniffed him. Naruto-kun what is that smell? She asked calmly, Naruto however felt a shiver running down his spine. What the hell? He thought, he sniffed his clothes and raised an eyebrow at her. What are you talking about? I smell like I normally do. He said simply, Hinata looked at him strangely before she shook her head. Must be my imagination. She said with a blush on her face and began to walk toward the academy, Naruto sighed and walked beside her. Naruto was sitting in his chair for a good 20 minutes waiting for Iruka-sensei to show up. It's so boring, where is Iruka-sensei anyway? Naruto said aloud, Shikamaru sighed and slightly raised his head from the desk. Probably Hokage-sama called him for something, I can only guess it's something about the team placement. Naruto nodded slightly at that. You're right, it's probably nothing he didn't get to finish as the classroom doors opened and Aruka walked in, however he was ghostly pale. He walked to the front of the class and turned toward them. Before I tell you about the team placement there is something very important that Hokage-sama wants to tell you about. He finished and the doors opened once more, and Hokage walked in, followed by a few more people, Naruto's eyes went wide open when he saw his parents, Kurumi and Fujinin, one of them was Hata Kakashi himself. Naruto looked at Jin who sent him a sad smile, he immediately knew what happened, he was forced to tell about them. Probably that Retsu woman, only Kenpachi could force Nai-sama to something he didn't want Naruto thought, Jin stepped in front of the class and cleared his throat, his pipe surprisingly gone. Many students stared in shock at Minato. First, as you probably see the fourth Hokage, Minato Namikaze, is back with us the same goes for his wife, Kishina Yuzumaki. At that the class began whispering. Yuzumaki, isn't it the same as Naruto? Wait a minute, there was an Yuzumaki clan once, but it was destroyed. What, that dobe has a clan? Silence. Hiruka shouted and all whispering ended, Jin sighed and shook his head. First of, Minato Namikaze didn't die, he and his wife entered a coma-like state from which they awakened few days ago. Ino suddenly raised her head which earned her a curious glance from Jin. Yes Miss Yamanaka. Ino stood up and looked at Kishina. I'm sorry Hokage-sama, but it's the first time I heard about the fourth Hokage having a wife. At that even more people nodded in agreement, Jin crossed his arms over his chest and nodded. Yes, that stupid council decided to erase that knowledge from history, the third Hokage was the one to propose such idea, as it could help hide his illegal dealings. At that many students gasped and Jin lowered their heads. But enough about it, the real thing I wanted to talk about was Naruto Uzumaki and that lovely lady beside me. He said, gesturing toward Kurumi, a look of horror crossed over Naruto's face as he began to shook his head lightly, Jin saw that and shook his head sadly. Minato Namikaze and Kashina Uzumaki Naruto is their son. At that everyone looked at Naruto who growled and tightened his hands into fists. However before anyone could say anything Kurumi stepped forward. Naruto-kun. She said softly, Naruto looked at her. It's better this way, better now than later. At her words Naruto only scoffed and crossed his arms on his chest. Do what you want, I don't care. With that said he closed his eyes, Jin sighed and shook his head. I knew it wouldn't be good he thought and looked around the classroom, many students were staring at Naruto in shock, some with anger, and some with adoration. Not that's out of the way, I should tell you the truth about the Kikbi, she didn't die, she was merely sealed inside a baby that baby being Naruto himself. Many people gasped, Shikamaru only muttered knew it and fall asleep again. However she was released few days ago, now for those that are scared of her, don't be, she was controlled back then, just like Madara Chiha once controlled her. At that Sasuke perked up. Sharingan he thought with a smirk. Now, she's with us, in this class. At that everyone began looking around in fear, Hinata however looked at the redeed beside the Hokage. Naruto-kun. She whispered softly, gaining his attention. The Kikbi, it's that woman beside Hokage, isn't she? At that Naruto looked surprised for only a second before he nodded. Yes. Was his simple answer, Kurumi sighed upon looking around the class. Everyone. She shouted gaining their attention. She looked at them and her tails appeared from behind her shocking everyone. I'm the Kikbi, Naruto Uzumaki's personal summon. She said in a voice full of pride, nearly everyone gaped at her before looking at Naruto who wasn't there, the only thing left after him was a small cloud of black mist. Kurumi sighed and turned toward Jin. I will find him. She said and Jin nodded in agreement, then she disappeared in a swirl of fire. Jin sighed once more before looking around the classroom on noting several looks of disgust from other would-be genin and saddened expressions from Naruto's group. Well then, to clear any misunderstandings. Jin said as he clapped his hands few times. Naruto sighed as he walked down the main street of Konoha, he knew that it would happen sooner or later, but not like this, everyone heard his secret, and he felt the malicious intents from Sasuke which wasn't good at all. After few more minutes of walking around someone tapped his shoulder, he sighed and looked behind him, then his eyes went wide open. Liz. 
he said in surprise as Lisbeth smiled at him, a paper bag in hand. Naruto-kun, what happened, you seem to be restless. She said calmly, Naruto sighed and nodded lightly. Yeah, something happened at the academy, and I really don't want to talk about it here. When he said that Lisbeth's eyes opened slightly wider, and she smiled at him gently. Then why don't you come to my place, we can have some tea while you explain. At that he smiled and kissed her lightly on her forehead. Thanks Liz, you're an angel. At that Lisbeth blushed and the two two of them began to walk down the street toward Red Light's district. When they walked through the district everyone bowed at the sight of Naruto which caused him to smile, that's why he liked this place, people respected him, no matter if it was a simple thug or a hooker. Naruto don't know, Lisbeth don't know. A female voice said from behind Naruto causing him to sigh. Nana-chan, I told you to just call me Naruto. He said calmly as he turned around toward the newly arrived woman. Nanao is a slim and youthful girl of around 164 centimeters in height with long black hair normally kept pinned back, with flat bangs that hang to the right side of her face, she has slightly light blue eyes that have a deep tint of violet and wears glasses with a slight oval shape to them. She wears long bluish black kimono with white trimmings, held close by a wide obi and open toothed sandals with low heels. Indeed Naruto Dono, you told me many times. At that Naruto sighed again. I just told you that you know what, whatever. He said without care and looked calmly at Nanao. So, what happened? He asked, Nanao nodded slightly and looked at Lisbeth. Kamraku sama wanted to see you Naruto Dono, Lisbeth Dono can also come if she so wished. With that said Nanao turned and began to walk away, Naruto shrugged and followed her with Lisbeth close behind. After a few more minutes of walking they arrived at a slightly run-down mansion, several people in dark clothes patrolled the perimeters of the mansion, but they all bowed when they saw Nanao, Naruto and Lisbeth. They walked inside and saw several more dark-clothed people who also bowed to them. After walking down several corridors they arrived at the sturdy double door, Nanao knocked three times before entering, they walked into a barely decorated office with a heavy-looking wooden desk facing the door, sitting behind the desk is, is a tall, light-skinned man of around 192 centimeters in height with high cheekbones, gray eyes and long wavy brown hair, his hair is tied in a long ponytail and has long bangs that frame the left side of his face, he also has thin facial hair around his mouth and on his cheeks. He wears black hakama pants, haori and white obi around his waist, he also wears a sujigasa straw hat and a pink flowered lady's kimono, which he drapes across his shoulders, and over his haori, on his feet he wears jetta. Kamraku sama Naruto Dono is here. Nanao said and walked up to the man's side, Kamraku smiled at them and inclined them to come closer. I heard that you became a genin Naruto, sorry for the late congratulations, but my people couldn't find you anywhere. At that Naruto laughed sheepishly and rubbed the back of his head. Yeah, sorry boss. I had something important to do outside the village. Naruto said to which Kamraku nodded and reached toward a cabinet in his desk, from which he pulled out a bottle of sake and three saucers. Well then, why don't you drink with me, this old man needs company from time to time. At that Lisbeth sighed and stepped forward. I'm sorry Kamraku don't know, we were in the middle of an important conversation when we were called here. At her words Kamraku's eyes shined in amusement for a few seconds before he grinned. Well then, I can't interrupt your fun now, can I? At that both Naruto and Lisbeth blushed before Naruto cleared his throat. Well then, boss we should be going now. When Kamraku nodded Naruto turned around and began to walk toward the door, however he stopped after a few seconds. Are you coming, Lisbeth? He asked in confusion to which Lisbeth smiled. Wait outside Naruto-kun, there are some things I must talk about with Kamraku-sama. Naruto looked surprised at that, but nodded nonetheless, he walked out from the office, and Lisbeth sighed. Kamraku-sama, I need to ask you a favor. At that Kamraku turned serious for a while. Well then, let's hear this favor out. Nearly half an hour later Naruto and Lisbeth entered her apartment which looked exactly like that of Naruto, except it was mostly white, they walked inside the kitchen where Naruto sat on the chair, while Lisbeth set a kettle on the stove. Well then, Naruto-kun, what happened to make you so restless? When she asked at Naruto's side. A few days ago I went to Karakura town for something 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 happened there. Lisbeth nodded at that. Go on, I'm listening. She said as she turned off the stove and put tea bags into two mugs, she filled the mugs with water and added two teaspoons of sugar to her tea. I am at my parents. Lisbeth nearly dropped the mugs as she walked toward the table, she looked at Naruto with wide eyes. W what she said in disbelief, Naruto sighed and shook his head. It seems that they weren't dead at all, only in something similar to a coma they are in Kanoha now. As he said that Lisbeth set the mugs on the table and turned toward the doors. Wait here Naruto-kun, I will be back soon. However Lisbeth didn't get too far as Naruto grabbed her right arm. Liz, don't do anything stupid, I don't want you to get in troubles. He said in worry, Lisbeth sighed and looked at him with uncertainty. Naruto-kun what will you do? At her question Naruto sighed and shook his head. I don't know I really don't know. 
he said in a defeated tone, Lisbeth smiled and turned toward him before she hugged him, resting her head on his chest. Naruto sighed and rested his head on top of hers. Liz I love you. He said with a tiny smile gracing his face, Lisbeth nodded slightly with her own smile. I know Naruto-kun, I love you too. Lisbeth said calmly, Naruto lifted her head slightly and kissed her gently on her lips, Lisbeth closed her eyes in content and relaxed in his arms, after several seconds they pulled out from the kiss, leaving a thin string of saliva connecting their lips. Naruto-kun I have something to ask you about. Chapter 6. Parenthood. July 19 15 years after Kikbi's attack Kanahagakur, you want what? Naruto asked in shock as he gently held Lisbeth in his arms. Naruto-kun, I want to give you something you never had a family. She said with finality in her voice, Naruto pulled back slightly and looked down at her with wide eyes. Liz, I can't do that, if people knew whose child it would be, they they would hurt you now as a gen and I wouldn't be present all the time to protect you, I can't put such a burden on you. When he said that Lisbeth narrowed her eyes at him and pulled out from the hug. I don't need your protection all the time Naruto because I'm a she stopped suddenly, her eyes not meeting his own. Naruto raised his eyebrow before something clicked in his mind. Liz are you a Quincy? He asked suddenly, Lisbeth turned her eyes right at him. What? She asked in shock, Naruto stared at her for a few more seconds before he suddenly smiled brightly at her. I knew for a long time that my girlfriend was something special you can't keep something like this away from me. He said and pulled her once more into a hug. How how did you know? She asked weakly and snuggled closer to him, Naruto chuckled. Liz, I'm a Shinigami and Quincy and a hollow. At that Lisbeth's eyes opened wide in shock, she looked up at him in shock and opened her mouth to speak, but Naruto silenced her with a kiss, the kiss lasted for a few seconds before Naruto pulled back and sighed in content. I will tell you some other time Liz, for now let's just sit and talk. At that Lisbeth nodded slowly, with that they sat down and began to drink their tea. So do you really want that Liz, it will be very hard for you. Naruto said in a saddened tone, they finished the tea long ago, and now lay down on her bed, snuggling close to each other, they still had their clothes on. Naruto-kun, those three years since I met you were enough to fall deeply in love with you, I really want to have your baby, because it's my dream to have a very big and happy family. Naruto chuckled at that and glided his hand through her hair. If you say so but not anytime soon, I have too much on my head now. Lisbeth nodded lightly. I know, I just really want to get away from here, start a family with you and live happily. She said the last part with a bright smile on her face, she took hold of her glasses and placed them on the nightstand. Would you take a nap with me, today must have been hard for you. When she said that Naruto groaned and nodded lightly. Yeah, a nap is a good idea. He said and closed his eyes, not even a minute later a light snoring could be heard which caused Lisbeth to giggle lightly. She laid on top of his chest and sighed happily. Things will sort out I just know it Lisbeth thought and closed her eyes, just like Naruto she was quickly asleep. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Kurumi said to Kashina who was standing in front of the door to Naruto's apartment, pounding furiously on the door, Kashina turned her head and glared at Kurumi. Shut up, you corrupted Naruto, I'm sure of it. She shouted and continued to knock furiously, Kurumi looked unfazed by her words and closed her eyes, when she found Naruto's energy she grinned. You naughty boy, coming straight away to Liz-chan maybe I should join in on their fun. She mentally asked herself, she pondered this decision for a few seconds before she sighed and looked at Kashina. But she really loved Naruto-kun, I should gave her a chance to talk with him she thought, and released a heavy sigh. Kishina-chan come with me. Kurumi said and began to walk toward the stairs, Kishina sent a death glare at her and turned toward the door, she raised her hand slightly, and was about to knock once more, before she sighed lightly. Damn it. Why should I listen to that slutty fox, she must be the one to corrupt Naruto Kishina thought, and looked at the retreating form of Kurumi who looked at her and shook her head. You damn stubborn woman, you want to see Naruto or what? At that Kashina sighed and nodded. Fine, let's go. Kurumi knocked at the door to Lisbeth's apartment, when nothing happened for several seconds she sighed and knocked once more, this time however a female voice answered. Humming. The doors swung open after a few seconds, and Lisbeth looked at the two women in front of her in surprise, it quickly ended however when she saw Kashina. Her face turned into a scowl, and she crossed her arms on her chest. Oh, it's you Naruto don't want to see you. Lisbeth said and was about to close the door when Kurumi's hand stopped her, Lisbeth frowned at Kurumi's hand and growled slightly. Get that hand away before I cut it off. Lisbeth threatened, but Kurumi just smirked, Kashina stepped forward with a saddened expression. Please, I must see Naruto, I couldn't be for him back then, but I want to be his mother for real now. At that Lisbeth scowled and balled her fists tightly. He don't need a mother, he has me. I will give him a family he never had. At that Kashina opened her eyes wide in shock while Kurumi hissed at Lisbeth. Over my dead body, I must be the first to have his kits. At that Lisbeth glared at Kurumi. Fuck no, only Kikmi can be first and she's still sealed in him. It's only natural that his second mate should have this honor. 
Kishina only stared at the two of them in confusion, Kurumi grinned widely and shook her head in amusement. Liz Chan, I'm the Kikbi. Kurumi said and her proof came in form of nine tails appearing behind her, and two rabbit-like ears appeared on top of her head, Lizbeth took a step back in shock, while Kishina flinched slightly, memories of the night 15 years ago still fresh in her mind. Why yo you're the Kikbi Lizbeth asked loudly and pointed at Kurumi who grinned even wider. Of course Liz Chan, can we come inside now, it's not nice to talk about private matters in open. After few seconds of thinking Lizbeth nodded slowly and stepped to the side, letting them in. Turn left. She said and after closing the door, she followed them into the kitchen where they all sat at the table. So what is this about Naruto and you, is he some harem master? Kishina asked after several seconds of silence, her brow twitching slightly at the thought of her son sleeping with multiple women. You can say that, Naruto-kun is probably the last male Yuzumaki, so his goal is to restore Yuzushio. At that Kishina's eyes opened wide in shock, she was about to shout out about something, but Lisbeth shushed her. Calm down, Naruto is sleeping. Lisbeth said, Kurumi raised her eyebrow and leaned close to Lisbeth, sniffing her. Hmm, you're obviously aroused, but I don't smell Naruto-kun semen on you. At that Lisbeth blushed and crossed her arms protectively on her chest. Of course you don't. Right now I would already had sex with Naruto, but he have too much on his head because of her. Lisbeth raised her voice and pointed at Kishina who flinched, however she quickly noticed what Lisbeth said and a vein popped out on her forehead in annoyance. Who the hell allowed you to do something like that with my son? Kishina shouted in anger, Lisbeth stood up and slammed her hands on top of the table. You have no right to control his life, he was doing just fine without you or that blonde bastard. At that Kurumi looked at Lisbeth in shock. Wow, Liz Chan, it's the first time you ever show some claws. At that comment Lisbeth sent a glare at Kurumi. Shut up you slutty fox, I know you want the same as I did. Kurumi chuckled sheepishly and scratched the back of her head. Before she could say anything however, the door to Lisbeth's bedroom opened, and after few seconds Naruto walked inside the kitchen. Liz, what the hell is his word stopped in his throat when he saw Kashina, he looked at Kurumi who looked sheepish, and then turned toward Lisbeth, who only sighed. Please hit Naruto-kun there is much we have to talk about. July 2015 years after Kikbi's attack on Hagakur, Naruto sighed as he waited for his team on the academy roof, his mother told him about meeting his team here so he waited, but his teacher should be here a long time ago. Where the fuck is he, that cyclops need a very good reason to be late. Naruto grumbled under his nose as he tapped his foot impatiently. Don't be like that Naruto-kun, you have much more important things to think about. Kurumi said happily, she's currently sitting on the floor with her back against the railing and in her hand a small plate with a piece of chocolate cake on it that Kurumi was munching on. Naruto sighed once more and looked at her. You really love chocolate, don't you? Naruto asked with a smile tugging at the corners of his lips, Kurumi stopped eating and looked at Naruto cutely. Can I get more later? Kurumi asked excitedly, Naruto sighed slightly and nodded. After we get this over with, just remember that our funds are limited. At that Kurumi nodded with a wide smile and returned to devouring the cake. Several seconds passed when a cloud of smoke caught their attention, the cloud quickly dispersed, revealing Kakashi Haddock, who stand before them with an orange book in hand, he glanced up from his book and blinked upon seeing Naruto and Kurumi. Um what is she doing here? Kakashi asked, pointing one finger at Kurumi who showed him a middle finger, Naruto sighed and ruffled his hair a little. She's my maid and partner, just treat her as an unofficial member of team wait what team is it? At that Kakashi sweat dropped. Team 7, Naruto the other members are Sasuke Chiha and Sakura Haruno. At that Naruto paled and palmed his face, a growl rolled out from his throat. Great emo duck is princess and pink banshee just what I needed. Naruto muttered, Kurumi nodded with a scowl on her face, while Kakashi sighed tiredly. It's just not my day is it? Kakashi thought and looked back at his book, even one minute didn't pass as the rooftop doors opened and the rest of Team 7 appeared. Great, you too. Naruto sighed in annoyance, his arms crossed over his chest, Sasuke's permanent scowl deepened, while Sakura fumed in anger upon seeing Naruto, then their eyes turned to Kurumi, who decided to stand on Naruto's right. My first opinion of you is boring. At that Sasuke and Sakura tried to protest, but one look from Kurumi stopped them, Kakashi nodded his thanks to her and cleared his throat. Alright, let's introduce ourselves, my name is Kakashi Haddock, I have many likes, not many dislikes, my hobby you don't need to know, and my dream well, it's not your business. At that both Kurumi and Naruto sighed while Sakura tried her hardest not to kill Kakashi, Sasuke just groaned slightly. Alright, you next fox. At that Kurumi scowled and muttered ungrateful peasant under her breath. My name is Kikbi Kurumi hopefully Uzumaki in near future upon hearing that Kakashi nearly choked on his spit while Sakura stared at Kurumi in disbelief, Kurumi however didn't care. I like Naruto, chocolate and having glorious sex. 
Kurumi proclaimed loudly, Kakashi nearly had a nosebleed, while Sakura blushed heavily, Sasuke like always remained stoic, Naruto however grinned brightly at the praise. I don't like rapists and people who think they are better than anyone. My hobby are reading, eating and spending time with Naruto, my dream is to have a very big family with Naruto. Naruto smiled at that and wrapped his arm around her waist, bringing her closer. Alright well that was interesting, Naruto, you're next. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, I like my mates, my friends, reading, cooking, training and Raymond. I don't like perverts, rapists, people who judge others without knowing them and people who hurt others for profits. My hobby is reading, training and spending time with my mates and friends, my dream is to restore Yuzushio to its former glory and get revenge on people responsible for its destruction. At the last part Sasuke and Sakura looked at Naruto in confusion. Yuzushio? I never heard about it. Sakura said to which Naruto sighed. It was destroyed years ago, my mother was raised there before she arrived to Konoha. Sakura nodded hesitantly, it was obvious she had some more questions. Kakashi nodded at Naruto and turned toward Sakura. You next pinky. At that Sakura turned red in the face from anger causing everyone except Sasuke to sigh. My name is Sakura Hirano, my likes are she glanced at Sasuke and blushed. I dislike Naruto Baka at that Kurumi nearly jumped at Sakura to rip out her throat, but Naruto stopped her. My hobby is taking care of my flowers, my dream is she once again glanced at Sasuke to which Kakashi sighed. Great, another fangirl Kakashi thought in defeat, he turned toward his last student. Sasuke. He said simply and Sasuke nodded. My name is Sasuke Chiha, I like training, I have many dislikes, my hobby is training and learning new jutsu, my dream is to restore the glory of my clan and kill a certain someone. The last part gained Naruto's attention, he knew who caused the Ichiha massacre and smirked. Ichiha Yusagi, Sasuke's older sister from the picture in her folder I remember she was quite hot, maybe I should find her Naruto must to himself with a smirk. Alright, it's only 10 am, so we have time for a true genin test. When he said that Sakura looked at him in confusion. I thought we were already genin. Naruto sighed loudly, gaining her attention. But you really thought that a simple writing test is enough to be a ninja? Sakura opened her mouth to speak, but closed it after few seconds, she looked down in embarrassment. Knew it. Naruto said, Kakshi sighed once more and scratched the back of his head. Alright, enough of it, meet me at the training ground 7 and 20 minutes. With that city disappeared an shunshin body flicker. Without another word Kurumi grabbed Naruto's shoulder, and both of them disappeared in a small cloud of black smoke. Naruto, Kurumi and Kakashi stand at the training ground 7 in complete silence, Sasuke and Sakura are yet to arrive, but Naruto could feel them coming closer. So, Naruto how are you feeling today? Kakashi asked with a eye smile, Naruto looked at him without a care. Rather good, Kurumi took care of that. Kurumi blushed, Kakashi already knew what he meant. Just then Sasuke arrived quickly followed by Sakura, who looked slightly paler than before. Great, you're all here. Kakashi said and reached behind his back, he pulled out two small bells to show them and tied it to his weapon pouch. Your objective is to get this bell, each of you have to get one to pass. At this Sakura raised her hand. Kakashi sensei, there are only two bells. Kakashi eye smiled. You are right Miss Haruno, this means that one of you will go back to academy. Naruto fasipamed and shoot Kakashi a knowing look. Alright, let's begin. Kakashi said and pulled out a timer which he placed on top of a wooden pillar that stood there, there were also two more pillars on each side of the one Kakashi placed a timer on. You have five hours to take the bells, time start. As he said that the timer activated, Sakura and Sasuke immediately jumped into the nearby trees to hide, while Naruto and Kurumi just stood there. Kakashi raised an eyebrow at that. You're not going to hide. He asked, two clouds of smoke appeared behind Naruto who looked blankly at Kakashi, the smoke cleared, revealing two copies of Naruto that quickly jumped after his teammates. I didn't have a good fight in a long time, I think you will provide some challenge. As he said that electricity began to slowly dance around Naruto, Kurumi smirked and moved away from him, sitting under a nearby tree. Just try not to kill him Naruto, it will be a pain in the ass to explain it to Hokage. Naruto only grinned at her as the electricity began to cover most of his body. Oh please, I know you want to see some blood. By now the electricity covered all of Naruto's body, Kakashi's eyes went wide open from shock. Right no yoroi lightning release armor. He thought in shock, after few seconds the lightnings around Naruto began to speed up and turn orange. From the sleeve of his Hayori a silver handle without blade slid out, Naruto caught the handle and pointed it at Kakashi who started to sweat slightly. Let's fight. Naruto said coldly, a bright blue energy shot out from the handle creating a blade, the orange lightning around his body began to also cover the blade, the blade of energy slowly started to turn orange, just like the lightning around Naruto. Chapter 7. 
the test. July 2015 years after Kikbi's attack on Hagakur, Bakashi stared in shock as orange lightnings danced on Naruto's body. Without any hesitation he pulled up his headband, revealing his scarred left eye that opened showing a Sharingan. Kakashi pulled out a kunai with both of his hands and took a stance which caused Naruto to smirk. Bakashi felt movement in the trees around them and became worried about his safety for a second before he shook his head. He's just a fresh genin, I shouldn't be too worried, just using Futon techniques should be enough, Kakashi thought and nodded to himself, when he looked up at Naruto he with fear, noticed that the blonde wasn't there. What? I just blinked and he's not there, just who taught him Kakashi began to frantically look around, and his grip on the kunai tightened, he felt a movement behind him, and quickly rolled to the right, just as Naruto crashed into the ground where he once stood, not wasting any time Kakashi threw the kunai at Naruto, and went through a series of hand seals. Ton. Tatapa wind release. Great breakthrough, Kakashi shouted, he took a deep breath and released a powerful stream of wind at Naruto, who quickly faced him and performed a tiger hand seal. Pain. Correctin. Fire release. Fire dragon bullet, Naruto within a second spewed out a stream of fire that, even with the strong wind blowing in the opposite direction, enlarged due to nature advantage and flew at slightly stunned Kakashi, who was already in the middle of performing another technique. The flames were hot enough to completely melt the kunai. Suiten. Sujinheki. Water release. Water formation wall, Kakashi spewed out a stream of water in front of himself that quickly formed a wall of water that stopped the flames from reaching him, much to his horror, however the flames keep coming, forcing him to constantly resupplying the water. After few seconds the flames stopped coming, and Kakashi was about to release the technique when something crashed into the wall and burst out of it, it was nothing else than Naruto with his lightning armor, a smirk on his face as his hand reached to Kakashi's face. Got you. Naruto shouted and caught Kakashi's face, Naruto raised him slightly before slamming him into the ground which created a rather deep crater, a testament to Naruto's strength. Naruto smirked for a second, but when Kakashi exploded into a cloud of smoke Naruto frowned, the only thing laying in the crater was a wooden log. Right Kawarimi cheap trick, but very useful Naruto thought and looked around, then his senses kicked in when he felt a natural electricity of a human body directly beneath him, he quickly jumped, but Kakashi's hand shot out from the ground and tightly grabbed his ankles, despite the armor of lightning shocking him, before Naruto could do anything Kakashi dragged him beneath the ground so only his head was visible, Naruto immediately burst out with a poof of smoke, showing that he was a clone, the real Naruto jumped into the air from the trees and prepared to deliver an axe kick on the ground, Kakashi's cage bunshin that was observing it in hiding dispelled, transferring the memory to the original. Take that. Naruto shouted and axe kicked the ground, creating a small tremor and shattering a good part of the field they are fighting, Kakashi quickly jumped out from beneath the ground and jumped back as Naruto was already at him with his energy blade, if Kakashi was slower, that slash could easily take off his head. Kakashi took out a kunai and coated it with wind nature chakra, he blocked a slash from Naruto, but the blade of energy slowly began to cut through the kunai, much to Kakashi's bewilderment, Kakashi quickly created some distance between Naruto and himself, before he threw the kunai at Naruto and started a series of hand seals. Like I'd let you. Naruto shouted and appeared in front of Kakashi, seeing Naruto's hands only inches from his face was slightly disturbing for Kakashi, but something else caught his attention, looking to his right, Kakashi saw something that froze him in place. Calmly sunbathing at the edge of the forest clearing was Kurumi, however what caught Kakashi's complete attention was the face that she was sunbathing naked, and the only piece of clothing she wore is a black thong that barely covers her womanhood. As Sharingan burned the image of her chest into his mind, even as Naruto finally grabbed his head and slammed him into the ground like before, this time however Kakashi didn't have time for Kawarimi. Kakashi glanced at Naruto who raised his left palm and slammed it down at his chest. Aim Gafute. Raining hand, Naruto shouted as he slammed his palm at Kakashi's chest, for a second nothing happened, but then a perfectly circular crater appeared under Kakashi that had at less 3 meters in radius and a dust shot out into the air. Kurumi's ears perked up at this as she raised slightly and looked at the cloud of dust. Oh my this fight is over it seems. She said lazily and laid back down, the cloud of dust cleared after few seconds and revealed Naruto standing over it down Kakashi, Naruto bent down and took the bells from Kakashi who groaned loudly. Naruto I can't move. He said weakly, Naruto sighed and picked Kakashi up before setting him on his right shoulder. Of course you can't, that last move was meant for immobilizing strong targets, you should be up and running after a good rest. At that Kakashi groaned once more, Naruto turned toward Kurumi and smirked upon the side of her naked body. Oh, so that's why you lost, pervert. At that comment Kakashi only growled in irritation. Kurumi, let's go. Naruto said loudly catching her attention, she quickly stood up and dressed before walking up to Naruto. Just then the other two members of his team arrived and gasped at the sight, the training ground was more or less destroyed, and Kakashi, their teacher, was defeated. 
Banshee, Duckus, let's go, the test is over. Naruto said and showed them the bells, Sakura was staring at everything in shock, while Sasuke glared at Naruto. Wait. Sakura screeched, gaining everyone attention. What about the test? One of yous without the bell was going to be sent back to academy. Naruto sighed and shook his head. Each new team have three genin added, this test purpose was teamwork, but I got slightly carried away in my fight anyway, let's meet here tomorrow at 7am, right, Kakashi sensei. Naruto said casually and Kakashi grunted slightly, Naruto began to walk away with Kurumi right beside him, Sasuke only gritted his teeth in anger before he walked home with Sakura following him and asking him on a date. Naruto and Kurumi quickly drop off Kakashi at the hospital and left, but even then they met with Retsu who started working there, after a small chat they went separate ways, Naruto and Kurumi toward their apartment and Retsu back to work. So what do you think about her? Kurumi asked after few moments of silence to which Naruto just sighed. I hate to admit it, but she could wipe the floor with me without any problems, you also can feel her power, can't you? Kurumi nodded with a short growl. Yeah, that woman is terrifying, she's just like that bitch Mido. Kurumi spat the name with so much venom that Naruto flinched slightly. You never told me what happened, why you hate her so much. At Naruto's question Kurumi sent him a blank look. She sealed me, if it was in a fair fight, then I wouldn't resent her that much, but she sealed me up when I was weakened, good thing she's dead. Kurumi said with a huff, she looked at Naruto and smirked after few seconds. You know how about a threesome Kurumi whispered which immediately caused Naruto to freeze in place, his eyes going wide in disbelief. You mean you and Lizaranko? He asked carefully, Kurumi closed her eyes and hummed in thought for few seconds before opening her eyes and grinning from ear to ear. Liz-chan, is that alright with you? Naruto immediately nodded at the question to which Kurumi nodded in satisfaction. Then let's go get Liz-chan, she should take a break from time to time. After she said that Kurumi grabbed Naruto by his arm and started to drag him toward the Kanoha's library. July 21 15 years after Kikbi's attack on Ahagakur, the sound of someone knocking at his door roused Naruto from his sleep, he groaned and slowly opened his eyes and looking around. His room looked like a total mess, clothes laid sprawled on the floor everywhere he could see, slowly, Naruto tried to sat up, but a weight on his chest held him down. He slowly looked down, and immediately the memories of last night returned to him, lying on his chest was Kurumi and Lisbeth, both naked under the sheets just like he is. Damn, that was one hell of a night, we really need to repeat that Naruto thought and carefully untangled himself from the grip his mates had on him, the girls quickly snuggled into the place he once occupied. After getting up he quickly dressed and went to his door to answer, opening them he was surprised to see in purple-haired Anbu with a cat-like mask. Yuzumaki-san, Hokage-sama have an announcement to make for the whole village, your presence is most important. At that Naruto blinked once, then twice finally he asked the best thing he could. What? That not very intelligent question caused the Anbu to sigh. Okajama wanted to make an announcement to the whole village at 10 am, he want you present there. Naruto slowly nodded and the Anbu disappeared in a shunshin. Naruto sighed and closed the door before returning to the bedroom, he immediately smiled when he saw his mate sleeping peacefully in bed. I want everything to stay like this forever Naruto thought with a smile on his face and looked at the clock hang I should better go now Naruto walked out from the bedroom and out of his apartment, he locked the door and began to walk toward the training ground 7. Much to everyone's shock Kakashi arrived on time which greatly disturbed both Sakura and Sasuke, Naruto however stood there with a triumphant smirk on his face. Kakashi blinked few times upon seeing Sakura and Sasuke crouching against a nearby tree and shaking in fear, he looked at Naruto and pointed at his other two students. What happened to them? Kakashi asked in confusion before the smirk on Naruto's face went wider. Maybe they're terrified that someone arrived on time. At that Kakashi raised his eyebrow. What do you mean, it's around 10 in the morning. Just as Kakashi finished Naruto began to laugh madly, Sakura and Sasuke perked up at that and looked at Naruto like he was crazy. After few minutes of laughing Naruto calmed down and shook his head. Kakashi, you didn't realize that I tinkered with your alarm clock. The rest of Team 7 and Kakashi stared at Naruto blankly for several seconds before Kakashi sighed and shook his head. Well, anyway today we don't have time to do much as Hokage-sama have an announcement to make for the whole village, gather on the main square at 10 am except you Naruto, you are needed at the top of Hokage Tower. At the last part Sasuke shot a glare at Naruto. What? That dope is needed while I'm not. Like hell. Sasuke thought and stood up to protest, however everyone quickly turned toward the path Kakashi came from when they heard someone walking toward them, Sakura paled and Sasuke smirked when they saw Kurumi walk toward them with a light limp. Kakashi immediately knew what happened and gave Naruto an eye smile, followed by a thumb up which Naruto quickly returned. Naruto's other teammates were confused as to what happened just now. Moo. Naruto-kun, it's not nice to leave a woman alone in bed you know. Kurumi shouted from the distance, Naruto chuckled and shook his head slightly. 
I just couldn't wake you up Kuhime, besides, you aren't very friendly after waking up. Kurumi pouted slightly as she walked up to Naruto. It's not my fault, you always get up early, and I need my beauty sleep. Naruto smiled and wrapped his arms around her waist, bringing her closer. You know I can't help it, besides, you always find a way to keep me in bed. Naruto smirked along with Kurumi, they were about to continue when Kakashi cleared his throat. You two can do that after we finish here. Kakashi said it which Kurumi pouted. Phil joy. She muttered and snuggled closer to Naruto, Kakashi just sighed and shook his head lightly. Anyway, as I was saying before Hokage-sama have a very important announcement to make, that's why be at the main square before 10 am, that's all, you two can continue. With that said Kakashi turned around and began to walk away. Naruto smirked and tightened his grip on Kurumi, the two of them was suddenly enveloped in a cloud of black miasma-like smoke, the smoke stayed for few seconds before dispersing, showing that both Naruto and Kurumi were gone. Sasuke growled at the place Naruto stood before he just walked away with Sakura following right behind him like a loyal pet. Yin watched the crowd from the top of Hokage Tower, his eyes and face devoid of any emotions. I can't believe Minato wants to reveal Naruto's heritage in front of the whole village, Naruto didn't want that, and that old fossil Shimura is still alive well he was always paranoid, no wonder he left a decoy inside his base Jin thought and turned, looking at all the gathered. Standing behind him was Minato, Kashina, Danzm, Hamura, Kaharu and the Jinin. He frowned slightly when Naruto didn't show up. Strange, he should be here by now just as Jin finished his thought a black cloud appeared at the roof from which Naruto walked out followed by Kurumi, Naruto was slightly exhausted, and Kurumi was practically glowing. Jin smirked upon seeing this. Oh my, you two were rather busy I presume. That comment turned him a glare from Naruto and a chuckle from Kurumi. Trust me, we were nowhere near the end. Kishina sighed and shook her head, while Minato frowned slightly. I can guess, anyway, it's about time. Jin said and turned back to the crowd. People of Konoha. Jin said with his chakra-enhanced voice. There is something all of you know about a certain day 15 years ago, the day when Kikbi attacked our village. At that many people began whispering around. That day, our beloved Yandame Hokage, Minato Namikaze, sacrificed his life to seal Kikbi inside his own son, that son is Naruto Uzumaki. Some people said a few spiteful comments about the demon, but they were quickly dealt with by the Anbu. However, few days ago I learned about something important our Yandame is alive, and what was his death was actually a coma. Many people began looking around which Jin easily noticed. In fact, he is right here, Minato, come closer. Minato stepped beside Jin, his Hayori gone. People immediately began cheering for their hero, but Minato stopped them by rising his hand. As you can all see I'm back, however not as a Hokage, but as a normal Jinin of Konoha. What Hokage-sama wanted to tell was not only about my return, but also about my son being officially chosen as a clan head of the Uzumaki clan. When Minato said that everything became quiet, people stared at him in shock for several seconds before someone brave, or stupid, shouted. Are you kidding, you let that monster be a clan head. Obviously, the one who said that was dealt with quickly and mercilessly which shocked everyone around. Minato frowned at them. My son is not a monster. Kikbi was under a Jinjutsu, a Jinjutsu that only a Sharingan is capable of. That caused everyone to stop and look at their previous Hokage. Actually, Kikbi is right here with us. When Minato said that Jin face palmed and groaned, Minato turned toward Kurumi, but only met a fist to his face, courtesy of an enraged Naruto whose eyes turned red. The punch was actually strong enough to send Minato flying off the roof. What do you think you are doing you bastard, leave Kurumi out of this. Naruto yelled after Minato who regained some composure and used H-I-R-A-I-S-H-I-N flying thunder god to appear back at the roof holding his nose. Why did you do that? I only want to help you. Minato shouted at Naruto who glared at him. Is this another one of your oh so great ideas, like thinking that this maggots down there would treat me like a fucking hero for having Kurumi sealed inside me? That comment stopped Minato from saying anything more, he just looked down at his feet and stayed silent. Naruto huffed and gently took Kurumi's hand before glaring at Minato one last time. Remember one thing, if you ever hurt Kurumi or any of my mates you will die. With that said Naruto and Kurumi were enveloped by the black cloud, the sign of his Anshia being used, Kishina placed a hand on her mouth in shock, she couldn't imagine how Naruto hated Minato to outright threaten him in front of the village. Many people saw the Kurumi and immediately know who she was. Naruto closed the door to his apartment with a sigh, the bad feeling he was getting this morning turned out to be true, and now it's too late to change anything. Narukan, don't worry about it, everything will be fine. Kurumi said calmly and hugged Naruto who sighed once more. I know Kuhaim, it's just hard for me to not kill that man, besides, with him around we need to alter our plan slightly. Naruto said seriously, Kurumi just smiled and gave him a light peck on his lips. It's not that bad you know, after all nothing will stand in your way. At that Naruto smiled. 
You know, you're right Naruto stopped suddenly and looked in the direction of his bedroom. You know how about he didn't get to finish as Kurumi was already leaning against the doorway completely naked. Are you coming or what, I still don't have enough after last night. Naruto cringed slightly at her words, he already knew that his hips will be hurting like hell next day. Chapter 8. Wave, Part 1. July 29 15 years after Kikbi's attack on a Hagakur. It was a calm afternoon in Kanoha, people were walking around doing what they wanted, birds were singing, and in a forest surrounding Kanoha an explosion alarmed most civilians, however all Shinobi and Kinoichi were calm, because they knew what was happening Tora the cat escaped again. I'm back here you stupid cat. Sasuke shouted as he chased after the cat, his clothes were singed in several places, and his face was covered in soot. The reason why he looked like that was simple yet very unbelievable, Tora took out an explosive tag from his pouch and somehow ignited it, it was by sheer luck that his body was completely intact. Sasuke, report. Kakashi's voice sounded through the radio, Sasuke sighed and pressed the button on his wireless radio. I lost the sight of the target. Sasuke said, the link stayed silent for several seconds before Kakashi responded. Continue searching, we must find her before whatever Kakashi wanted to tell was lost as a woman's scream sounded through the forest. Who is that? Sasuke thought, he looked in the direction of the sound, but stopped as a heavy presence invaded the air, and it became harder to breath. While what's going on Sasuke thought in fright, the presence was so heavy that Sasuke went on his knees. It felt like hours, but after several seconds Kakashi landed beside Sasuke hit his face with open hand. Hocus, Sasuke. Kakashi said sternly, his lone eye narrowed. The hit snapped Sasuke out from his daze, he quickly stood up and nodded. Duoria. A shout of rage filled the forest air, it sounded very similar to Naruto's voice, but it was distorted, almost like speaking through water. Kakashi's eyes widened and looked at Sasuke. Oh fine Sakura, whatever happened it seems like Naruto is pissed. Kakashi quickly said and jumped in the direction of the shout, Sasuke wanted to argue, but the shout scared him slightly. Fuck that, it's dope's problem, not mine he thought and went searching for Sakura. Several minutes ago, what the hell was that? Naruto thought with raised eyebrow, he turned toward Lisbeth. Maybe we should go, whatever is happening it's not our problem so whatever he wanted to say was stopped as memories of the shadow clone he sent with his team returned, the last thing he saw was a brown blur that hit his face. What the fuck? Naruto shouted, but he couldn't do anything more as the same brown blur slammed into his chest and sent him flying toward the lake, he hit the water and quickly disappeared under the surface at which Lisbeth screamed in fright. Hora herself however just huffed angrily and turned to leave, but a heavy presence mixed with godly amount of killer intents filled the air, in that moment Tora knew she fucked up. Duoria. Naruto screamed in fury as he appeared on the surface after few seconds, his voice distorted and chilling to the bone, he focused his chakra in his feet and stood on the water surface, his orange riatsu manifesting around him like a cloak of flames and becoming larger with each second. Lisbeth also felt the killing intents, but not in a level Tora did as she was the main target of Naruto's rage. He pulled out a Z-A-N-P-A-K-U-T-M soul cutter sword and pointed it at Tora who was rotted to the ground in fear, Naruto's sclera turned black in color and his iris changed color to a glowing neon blue. He placed his left hand on top of his face and made a gripping motion, a black flame-like aura with bright blue specks in it, his riatsu slowly turned the same color. You will regret this. Naruto muttered coldly, he brought his left hand down and the same flame-like aura covered his face. The aura dispersed after few seconds and a white goat-like mask appeared on his face, the mask is rather simple in design, with large straight horn pointing upward and a black upside-down hook-like mark where his forehead is. The horns also have three black stripes circling horizontally near the base, in the middle and near the top of the horns, his piercing eyes stared at Tora from the narrow eye holes in the mask. Tora immediately started to run just as a trench appeared where she once stood, Naruto turned toward Liz who stared at him in awe. You can go Liz-chan, I have something to do. Naruto said and disappeared with a sound of statics, Lisbeth just stared at the place he once was in and blinked. He seriously has hollow powers Lisbeth thought and slowly made her way toward the village, a horde of thoughts going through her head. O-T-O-R-A where are y -O -U, Naruto said loudly in a sing-song voice as he brought down another tree with his sword, it was few minutes since the situation by the lake and he still searched for Tora, he looked around with cold eyes before he sighed and prepared to search somewhere else when a slight almost non-existent rustling caught his attention, he looked at the tree behind him and caught a glimpse of red ribbon, under the mask he flashed a feral smirk. Tora was hiding on the high branch of the tree, she trembled in fear as she recalled several near-death situations she had in the past several minutes. No good Naya. That guy is crazy Naya. Tora thought as she heard footsteps nearing her and tensed, however few seconds later the footsteps stopped and she breathed a sigh of relief. Hail bastard, I thought I was going to die Naya. Fuck that Naya, I will go back to that bitch Naya. 
Tora was about to jump down when she saw her reflection in the blade that embedded itself right in front of her face, her eyes went wide open when she saw the goat-like mask in the reflection. There you are, you gave me some trouble, you know. Naruto said in a sing-song voice, it was clear that he was pissed off. Tora was about to escape when a hand grasped her head. Now now, there's no need to run, I just wanted to talk. Naruto sickly sweet told Tora a completely different story, he lifted Tora and turned her to face him, feeling a moment of desperation she slashed her claws at his face, but the mask protected it. Naruto's eyes narrowed at her as he shook his head slightly. Now listen here, I wanted to make one thing clear, now I will take you back to your owner, and you better don't think about escaping again, or else Naruto threatened it which Tora gulped. I will find you and make you regret ever being born understood. Tora immediately began nodding furiously, Naruto's mask disappeared as he stood up and sheathed his sword. See, it wasn't so hard now was it? Naruto said cheerfully just as Kakashi landed next to him. I see you got her, now we can go back good work. Kakashi said with pride in his lone eye, Naruto nodded and the two of them along with Tora, who was still held by Naruto, went to search for the rest of the team. August 3 15 years after Kikbi's attack Kanahagakur, the Inichimaru, Rakudame Hokage of Kanahagakur no Sato, one of the most powerful people in the village blinked in shock. The cause of his shock was simple, the request made by Ichiha Sasuke, a member of Team 7. Say what now? Jin asked for confirmation of what he just heard. You heard me, I have enough of this D-ranked shit. I want a challenge worthy of an Ichiha like me. Sasuke said in a raised voice, Naruto who stood beside the Ichiha side. Here we go again. Natuto muttered under his nose to which Kurumi, also present with him, sighed and shook his head with Kakashi doing the same, the only member of Team 7 not annoyed by this is Sakura, who have stars in her eyes, as she watched her Sasuke kun in awe. It was a long time since I heard something stupid like that. Jin simply said and returned to his paperwork, that is, until a hand slammed on top of his desk with enough force to scatter the papers everywhere. I won't do any more dear ranks, you hear me. I must get stronger, as an elite it's my duty. At that every member of Team 7 sighed once more, however Sakura sighed longingly with a dreamy look in her eyes. Jin looked at Kakashi who waved his hand lazily, giving him a go-ahead Jin nodded slowly and reached into the drawer on his desk, from which he pulled out a scroll. Alright, if you really want it so much then I'm not stopping you, here is a simple C-rank mission, I hope it will be satisfying to you. Jin said lazily and placed the scroll in front of himself, Sasuke smirked and took the scroll. It's a simple escort mission to Nami no Kuni Wave Country, the worst you will have to worry about are some bandits, not much, but it will do for the first serious mission. Just as he finished speaking the door to his office opened and an elderly, bespectacled man of around 179 cm in height with grey hair, large beard and dark eyes, he wears a sleeveless v-neck shirt with an opi, pants and a pair of sandals. He also carried a towel around his neck and wore a pointed hat on his head. He also have a bottle in his hand, he looked at everyone inside the room and scoffed slightly. I wanted ninja, not brats, it isn't what I paid for. At that comment Sasuke glared at the man and rushed at him, however Naruto tripped him, causing Sasuke to smash head first with the floor. Ups, my bad. Naruto said lazily which caused Kurumi to giggle and Sakura to glare at him. Jin smirked while Kakashi had a smile that was barely visible thanks to his mask. The elder man scratched the back of his head and mumbled something under his breath. Well the blonde kid isn't so bad, I think. By the way my name is Tazuna, just hurry up and get ready, I want to go back as soon as possible. With that said Tazuna walked out from the office, just as Sasuke stood up and glared at Naruto. What do you think you're doing dope? Sasuke shouted at which Naruto only looked around for several seconds, before finally setting his eyes on Sasuke. Oh, I forgot you were there, I'm not sorry at all. With that said Naruto looked left at Kurumi who was clinging tightly to his arm. So, are you coming too? Naruto asked which caused Kurumi to grin. But you every damn time. The implication was clear to everyone, outside of the Hokage office, inside the forests of the Aburam compound, Shino looked toward the Hokage office and gave the thumb up. His father, Shibi, raised an eyebrow at that. What are you doing? He asked, Shino looked at his father and simply shrugged. An hour later the Team 7 along with Tazuna waited for the last member of the team, Naruto. Where is that Baka? We should get going already. Sakura shouted causing everyone nearby to cringe as their eardrums nearly exploded. Damn, that boy sure is loud. Tazuna commented bluntly, Sakura heard that and turned toward him. I'm a girl. She shouted right in his face which caused Kakashi to sigh and face palm. Why did I ever agree to this? Kakashi thought in despair, just then from the corner of his eyes he saw Naruto along with Kurumi who was limping again. The hell, does they ever take a break? Kakashi asked himself but quickly decided to just leave it. Sorry for the late, I had something important to finish. Naruto said with a grin on his face, Kurumi giggled at that. And that was one hell of a finish. Kakashi sighed as he saw the other genin of his team blush. 
I'm too old for that he thought and shook his head. It's good you're here, let's just go. And with that said the team along with their client went through the gate of Kanoha toward their destination, Nami no Kuni. Few hours later they were still walking, Sakura was asking Tazuna about the wave, Sasuke and Kakashi looked around, and Naruto just flirted with Kurumi, the sun was glaring down at them, but they didn't react in any way. However after another several minutes something interesting happened which Naruto instantly noticed. Really, a puddle when it hasn't rained in few weeks, are they retarded or what Naruto thought and looked as Kakashi slowed down and began to walk beside Naruto who gave him a nod. Kakashi slowed even more so he walked the last and just as he passed the puddle two figures jumped out of it. Both of them has shoulder length while dark brown hair and dark eyes. They wears a reed breathers that covers the lower half of their faces and a large clawed poisonous gauntlets on their arms which are connected to each other by a shuriken chain, they both wear a camouflaged suits with bandages around their waist. They rushed to Kakashi and entangled him in their chain before one of them shouted. Now, Maizu. With that both of them pulled on the chain and shredded Kakashi into pieces much to everyone's shock, the two killers turned toward the rest of the group and rushed at them. At the bridge builder, Gosk. The one now identified as Maizu shouted, however they didn't saw Naruto who suddenly appeared behind them and pulled out a sword before plunging it down onto the chain. Now now, it's not nice to attack like that. A voice from behind them gained the attention of the two assassins, their eyes went wide open when they saw the blonde kid with his sword pinning their chain to the ground, they realized that too late however, so their sprint ended with them being suddenly pulled off the ground and falling to the ground on their backs. When that happened Sasuke snapped out of his stupor and rushed at the two ninja, just as they tried to stand up, punching them both and knocking them out. Wow that was quick. Naruto with the group said and disappeared in the cloud of smoke, earning a surprised looks from Tazuna and Sakura. The real Naruto pulled his sword out of the ground and sheathed it, promising to clean it later. You can come out now Kakashi-sensei. Naruto said as he turned to the right, few seconds later a clapping could be heard as Kakashi walked out from the forest. Impressive, I knew you could do this Naruto he trailed off as he looked at Tazuna with a cold gaze. Now as for you Tazuna-san, I hope you have some explanation to do. Kakashi said at which Tazuna gulped in fear, he quickly began to explain how it was the amount Nami no Kuni could afford, about Gatman the poverty he brought to the country, he also told them about the bridge which is their only hope. After the explanation was done Kakashi sighed and turned toward his genin. As much as I want to go back, I must ask you do you want to continue? The question caused mixed reactions, Sakura fidgeted in place while taking a glance at Sasuke, Kakashi sighed at this, Sasuke snorted and crossed his arms on his chest. I don't mind, it can be some challenge at least. Sasuke said arrogantly with a smirk on his face, Kakashi shook his head mentally and looked at Naruto, who looked like he wanted to kill someone. We should go, I want to behead the Gatan guy. At that answer Kakashi sweat dropped, he glanced at Kurumi who had a psychotic smile on her face. Alright, if you all want so Kakashi started and looked at Tazuna with an famous eye smile of his. We will help you, just let me tie up this too and send a message to Hokage, maybe he can send some backup as this mission became much more difficult. With that said Naruto walked up to the two unconscious ninja and picked them up before he brought them under the tree where he tied them up. The demon brothers, if they are here then I have a feeling there are going to be trouble Kakashi thought and wrote a quick message describing their situation. I hope they will send someone. He said quietly and was about to summon one of his dogs when Naruto's hand landed on his shoulder. Let me do it Kakashi sensei. Naruto said and performed a chain of hand seals before biting on his thumb as to draw blood and slamming his right palm on the ground. Kuchius no Jutsu summoning Tech Inc., Naruto shouted, and a sealing matrix appeared under his hand before exploding in a large cloud of smoke, it dispersed after few seconds showing something that made Kakashi and the other blink. Standing before Naruto was a small white fox reaching to just below his knees, it has silver eyes with slitted pupils, and several golden colored sticking out strands of fur, shaped like a lightning bolts all across its body, it also have bigger lightning shaped strands of fur on its head, along with golden colored tips of ears and its two tails, it also have a forehead protector tied around its neck, it has golden cloth with silver plate, on which a spiral symbol was engraved. The fox looked up into Naruto's eyes with excitement. Daddy, you didn't visit me for a long time. The fox said loudly in a feminine tone, clearly showing her gender. Everyone except Kurumi blinked in confusion as the fox jumped into Naruto's arms and made herself comfortable, Naruto smiled gently at her. Look at you Kanatsu-chan, to think that only few months ago you were just a one-tailed kid. I'm sorry for not visiting, but I was busy. Naruto said and began to gently scratch her head, earning a purr from the small kitsune. Um Naruto did she just called you daddy? Kakashi asked uncomfortably at which the small fox lifted her head in Kakashi's direction and smiled brightly or at least it looked like a smile. Of course, daddy is my daddy so I call him daddy. 
At that answer Kakashi and everyone else couldn't help but blink again, Kakashi looked at Naruto first and stared for few seconds before looking at the smiling Kurumi, then his gaze went back to Naruto. He blinked few more times before a thought entered his mind. Naruto did you and Kurumi-san he began as took one more look at Kurumi who stared at him in confusion, Naruto raised an eyebrow at him before he finally understood what he meant. Oh, no not yet at least, Kanatsu-chan is my daughter in all but blood, she was one of the orphan kits after Yuzushio was destroyed, not many people know that, but foxes inhabited that island and were contracted with my clan, thanks to Kurumi I was able to sign the contract with them. At the last part Kanatsu perked up and looked in the direction of the red head, she narrowed her eyes at her before Kurumi smiled and released her tails from the hiding. Kanatsu almost immediately jumped out from Naruto's arms and bowed before Kurumi. Ikbi-sama, it's an honor to meet you in person. Kanatsu said calmly at which Kurumi chuckled and lifted her up. Kanatsu-chan, you don't need to be so formal with me, if Naruto-kun is your father, then it makes me your mother. Kurumi said lovingly and lightly hugged the kit which earned her a gasp of surprise from said fox. The H then, daddy is your mate. Kanatsu asked uncertainly which earned her a surprised look from Kurumi. Oh my, so young and already knows what mating is, kits these days grow up so quickly. Kurumi said with a hint of amusement in her voice, a pink dusting appeared on Kanatsu's maw, but she didn't say anything. Buhaim, as much as I would like for the two of you to bond, we don't have time. Naruto's voice got Kurumi's attention, she nodded and looked down at the blushing fox in her arms. Kanatsu-chan, you must deliver a message to Konoha, it's urgent. At that Kanatsu looked up at Kurumi with eyes full of determination. Of course mommy. With that final words Kanatsu jumped off from Kurumi's arms and walked up to Naruto, who gave her a scroll which she caught in her mouth. Kanatsu-chan, deliver this to Hokage as fast as you can, can you do that? Naruto asked at which Kanatsu nodded and sparks began appearing around her body, few seconds later she was gone, leaving only a small cloud of dust behind. Naruto stood up and stretched slightly as his gaze turned to Kakashi. She should get to Konoha in an hour at max, for now we should get going. He said simply and turned toward Kurumi who was, to his great surprise, blushing. Guheim? Are you alright? Naruto asked breaking Kurumi out from her thoughts, she let out a short giggle and looked at Naruto. I'm fine, let's go. With that said both Naruto and Kurumi began to walk down the road, soon everyone else snapped out from their stupor and followed them, still greatly confused as to what happened. What if Naruto neglected by families and Pakuto council bashing? Thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.